This is the Flint City Council meeting brought to you by the Flint City Council and presented by Spectacle Productions. Don't just watch TV, make it. And underwritten in part by the Flint Pipe Fitters Union. Looking for pipe fitters apprentices throughout Flint. Reading of the disorderly persons city code uh, subsection, and it reads: Any person that persists in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who presents who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators shall be removed from the meeting. This is the April 12th um, City the of Flint this meeting today special is to allow this city council meeting. Body to continue discussing to, dis to continue discussions regarding the city's medical marijuana facilities proposed ordinances, including discussions of possible amendments to those particular ordinances. Yeah, Ms. Before, Pratt. Before we, we get in or uh, enter into any dialogue, I, I would like to first of all uh, see what, where, where Councilman Mays is going, and then after Councilman Mays, I would like to call up uh, Assistant, Assistant City Attorney Reed Erickson and Kevin Scrantz to update us on where we are, and then please provide us with uh, deadlines, information regarding deadlines. Councilman Mays. Yeah, two things, Mr. President. One. <laughs> When the meeting was posted, it I think I seen a posting that had this particular um, agenda item, and it also, I think, was posted for additional council business. I okay. Think. And so I want to make sure prior to the final comments, we have this agenda with additional council, council. business in it. I ordered that so, sir. Uh, because that's exactly you're right. That's how it was posted. That's how it was posted. Right. And so um, I wanted to do that change to the agenda. And then also, um, you know, I can't speak for the other council people, but I'll proceed with that order. But I, I really want to get something done today on this. There's a list of amendments, and we've listened and listened and listened, and we haven't proposed and voted on amendments, and that's what I wanted to come here to do today. Okay. I don't know how long Mr. Erickson going to take, but we do have a group of amendments that we need to try to see if we can vote on and pass rather than all the constant presentations. Thank you. Gotcha, Councilman. Thank you, sir. Say, council, uh, I started to say Councilman Reed Erickson, but you're not a Councilman. You're an attorney. That's correct. All right, Mr. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so springboarding off of uh, Councilman May's uh, comments, I, I will be very brief because he's absolutely correct that we are in what I would characterize as crunch time right, right now when it comes to this amendment um, because it's the intention of the city to opt into this ordinance uh, and opt in into the Michigan Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act in a fashion that doesn't jeopardize the current uh, provisioning centers that had already been licensed under the prior ordinance. Now, under the emergency rules for the state of Michigan, uh, those facilities are allowed to operate on a temporary continuing basis until June 15th of this year. Um, so that's what we do not want to run into where we've not finished our ordinance in a time that gives them the opportunity to apply to the state of Michigan for full licensure. In the event we don't do that, those facilities would have to close on a temporary basis, and, uh, and then once our ordinance and licensure is completed and they have their licenses granted by the state of Michigan, presumably they could reopen, but their temporary continuing status could be jeopardized uh, by, by delay. 
Uh, and so that's not to um, be dramatic about the matter, but those are, those are the facts and the timeline that we're facing. And there have been two amendments so far already, and I, and I would absolutely agree with Councilman Mays that if there are additional amendments, now is the perfect time to introduce them. Um, but two amendments have been made already, and I'd just like to touch on those very briefly. Uh, the one is a very basic amendment and was done at our first hearing on the matter, and that's to change the minimum square footage for growing facilities from 10,000 square feet to 5,000 square feet. Uh, those two changes can be found on pages 3 and 29, which are the two references for minimum size for grow facilities. Uh, the only change you'll see that it says 5,000 square feet as the minimum size for the structure as opposed to 10,000. It's as simple as that. A more substantive change uh, at our last council meeting on the matter was the introduction of the merit review process. And I, I tried to hand out, um, when this was first introduced, copies of it in plain formatting, but also the language can be found in the current copies you have before you on page 8 through page 10. And uh, I'll, I'll go over that in broad strokes, but ultimately this body uh, did vote to amend the ordinance to adopt a merit-based approach, and that was the entirety of the amendment. So staff uh, started with uh, Councilman Guerra, who was the bringer of the motion, to get some further clarification on, on at least what we thought was intended. And obviously, if this body disagrees, then I'm happy to make any revisions that are, that are so desired. But very briefly, the merit review process has four subsections. The first, subsection A, for the application window, that there would be a 45-day period for any interested licensees to apply. Now, that really would only apply to the licenses that are subject to a cap, because in the event that there is no uh, cap in place, then there's no need to have a merit review process for order, because any that meet the site's uh, criteria would be eligible for licensure. Uh, so at the conclusion of that 45-day window, um, once the, uh, if we exceed the cap, then we have to do the process. If, for example, uh, safety compliance facilities and uh, secure transport only have five licenses, if we only get three applications, we don't need to review the merits because they're all eligible. It's only if we have six applications we need to determine which are the top five that would be best for the city. That's my interpretation of uh, the merit approach. Uh, section, subsection B would be blind review, which uh, would be that the zoning coordinator would take the applications but not participate in the scoring process uh, and would in fact redact the applications so that we know the specifications of the proposed site but not necessarily the applicants so that we can have an arm's length review and uh, review it strictly on the objective merits so that we can do our best to prevent any accusations of nepotism or cronyism or racism, classism, sexism, so on and so forth. Uh, the scoring panel, our proposition is that it's made up of staff, uh, uh, designee of the heads of legal, planning and zoning, uh, police, fire and building and safety inspection departments uh, to score these based on a predetermined uh, rubric of criteria. And that brings me to subsection D, the factors for scoring. So this proposed language says that we would actually return before this body with a finalized rubric uh, for scoring and criteria that under which these licenses would be reviewed. So the following criteria is included as a floor. The ordinance says these factors would definitely be included and we could include additional factors as well and that rubric would be subject to approval by this body. And then finally, subsection E, determination of order. So once the applications are scored, the individual applicants could be would be notified of the order of their placement. Those within the cap would proceed through the licensure process accordingly. Uh, those who do not complete the licensure process in six months would result in a constructive denial. Uh, the next best applicant would be afforded the opportunity to apply and so on and so forth. Uh, the remaining, uh, excuse me, the remaining applicants who were not within the cap would be treated as, as a waiting list uh, so that in the event that currently existing grandfathered facilities don't pass Michigan licensure, if any facilities are closed uh, for administrative or court order or failure to renew at the state level, or if uh, the city chooses in the future to raise the cap, we would already have the list in place so we're not doing the work twice. I've tried to keep it brief, but those are the two amendments that this body has done so far, and I'm, of course, happy to take any questions. Councilwoman Fields. Um, so, could you tell me which ones have caps? Yes. So there are, there are three proposed caps of the five, five license types. 
the two that I don't think we will run into, because frankly we haven't heard a lot of interest in, in these kinds of licenses, are secure transport, and I, now, I think of a Brinks truck for moving marijuana between growers and provisioning centers and potentially processors as, as well if they're off-site, and safety compliance facilities, which are meant to, I think, te test for um, parasites as well as for uh, safety, uh, THC percentages, because of course uh, a bottle of beer is different from a bottle of whiskey, and you need to know uh, which of the two you have in front of you. What are the caps on those? Those are five licenses apiece. Okay, and would you go over the other? The, the, the last one, uh, subject to a cap, is provisioning centers. Uh, a common word for it is dispensary, but provisioning center is, is the technical term of art, and that's what we've used under pr our prior ordinance. And that would be 20. And uh, we've had 13 under the prior ordinance. I believe a couple have received cease and desist orders from the state of Michigan, but we're seeing how that plays out because I'm not sure if that's a miscommunication that has caused that or what, but I do anticipate that less than 13 will actually pass the state of Michigan's review, and then that would open up more slots within that 20 um, to, uh, to open up for licensure. And one other thing when it comes to those 20 is that um, we try to be very competitive. There's no uh, urban city besides Lansing who's doing more, and their process has become very encumbered, and I would not advise uh, that we take that approach. Um, but they're doing 25, which so we're pretty much on par with that when, it, when you adjust for population, so we are trying to be competitive. But at the same time, it's much easier for this body to raise the cap in the future in the event we find as for administration and enforcement that we can handle the licenses and add to it versus getting the genie back in the bottle is, is much more difficult, which is why we try to be conservative, but also balance that with, with um, generating business. And what we don't have any caps on growing or processing? Correct. They have, license, they have strict site requirements. They have to be uh, within a minimum of 5,000 square feet now for the grow and 10,000 for the processing, and we anticipate most of those will be co-located, but that's not required. Uh, we do require both of those to be in industrial zoned districts as well, uh, and as to growers, the state of Michigan requires that. We have no say over that. So, And, of course, there are the distance requirements for schools, parks, and churches that apply as well. So they do have site requirements, but if you're willing to invest in the city for one of these licenses and, and use our under-industrialized corridors and meet the site specifics, we're glad to have you. That's the approach. Do, do we have any idea how many visible sites actually currently meet uh, the, the zoning requirements for growing and processing? So very briefly, uh, mapping went out, although I believe that was for the Group E, so that would include the provisioning, which are D5 and D6 as well. Um, but I would, as far as a strict number, I don't know, but I would defer to Kevin for at least a generalized parcel number. Mr. President, point of information. What's your point? What's your point, Council? I've requested that that type of map be presented to us a okay. little while back. Okay. Hello, Council. Um, so there was a map that was distributed at the last meeting um, that I outlined under the current current draft that was presented to you where those um, provisioning centers would be permitted. That was the request that that we received. I think for a general. Um, it's difficult to give you an exact number because some of these are some of these parcels uh, um, I guess the total number of parcels some have buildings some don't I would say under the current I would estimate it's probably uh, a couple hundred parcels um, that would be eligible but some of those get taken offline remember um, when other uses come on what you know other locational standards are then checked off under this so it's difficult but right now a couple hundred I would estimate because they have to There was not a number, no. And, and I know it is possible, uh, you know, uh, someone could buy this site and then buy the site next to it and combine them. Correct. Um, so it's, it's variable, but you think right now there's maybe 100 industrial sites? I would say a couple hundred. A couple hundred, okay. An estimate. Uh, an estimate, yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. President. Councilman Mays? Yeah. Um, that map locates the industrial property, but it doesn't, in my opinion, narrow it down to the 1,000 feet, 500 feet that we might propose. So it's just, a, it's just a generic map of the industrial sites, was my understanding. 
Um, no, so the map that was presented at the meeting is a spatial analysis that includes all the locational standards which were in the initial draft. So that's a thousand feet faith-based park and, and So um, was Buick City on that map? So the Buick City site, was the, it the on main that Buick map? City site was not orange because it's within 300 feet of a residential. So that's why that was not indicated on that map. The, the parcels um, east Buick was. City site is also within so many feet of a uh, um, church. But anyway, which is Antioch. Anyway, Mr. President, that's one of the amendments that was being proposed. I talked to Mr. Erickson about it. He can elaborate on it. But when you got industrial properties such as Buick City, I propose that if it's over five acres, you remember that discussion, Mr. Erickson, that you work on that if it's over five acres, because you wouldn't want to knock out all that industrial land on property line to property line. Can you enlighten the council on that conversation about over five acres? I'm happy to do so, Councilman. So yes, we, we did have that conversation, and that is an option for this, for this body. I don't have uh, written copies, but to be frank, I think uh, an oral motion, it's not like the merit review where there's a lot of nuance that I have to infer. I think a motion to amend I could have uh, in a written form exactly as this body desires uh, by the next meeting if it's the desire of this body to do that amendment. It's entirely possible for us to, uh, because currently the way that the zoning lines are measured is from parcel line to parcel line. It is within this body's authority to say for five acre parcels or larger. Um, we could specify specifically for industrial if so desired. Uh, it would be measured from the parcel line of the disqualifying property to the facility, which would then prevent large sites from being knocked out. I spoke to the city assessor very briefly on this as well, um, and parcels can also be split. And when it comes to usage of the land, it, it may Mr. be- President, Yes. if I may, we specifically went over a formula for if it was more than five acres, and I thought you was taking notes. So if you're saying by the next meeting, I guess we can sit out here and hammer that down if it's over five acres. I'll circle back to that. But I wish you had a, had those details and um, ready to roll. But that's okay, I guess. But that's what we'll talk about when an industrial site is over five acres. We also talked about a medical um, exemption for the applicant. If the applicant is a medical doctor, we also talked about um, an exemption, and those exemptions would allow for a medical applicant, a, a doctor with, who's applying as an applicant to do a facility on an industrial site that would include grow processing and dispensary. Did you write a communicate that one down. Or do I, I do have, have a written copy of that. Word it and then, beg your pardon? Yes, I, I do, and f first allow me to apologize, Councilman, because I didn't have the takeaway that, but we could, the amendment for the, for the five parcels um, could be done very easily, and I don't think we would need to make amendment at a subsequent meeting. A, a vote on that would qualify. But to, to get to the question at hand, as far as the <laughs> facility exemption. So that's two amendments we've discussed so far. One for five acres or more, and now two we go into the medical exemption. Correct. The medical research facility exemption that had been discussed previously between you and I as well as brought up by uh, Councilwoman Worthing. And at both your and her request, um, I've taken a look at sample language that we discussed and that she had provided. And I did actually, I do have a printed copy of proposed language that if it's the will of this body to make such an exemption, that I think would work with the city to prevent at least abuse and creating loopholes. Do you have copies for the council to look at? I, I do, do and I have one copy. No, I have um, a dozen copies. I, I provided them to Councilwoman Fields because I initially thought she was going to bring Councilwoman Worthing's motion on her behalf today. Can we look at that now? I, I have no objection to that. Councilwoman Fields, may I pass Who those out? a copy of yes. that amendment. And then also, Ms. Mr. Uh, President, through you to the city attorney, we talked about another exemption, which was um, less than a thousand feet for two categories. What is what is required by federal law? A thousand feet from a school. So church and park, we were discussing what five hundred feet. That's exactly right. It's been staff's proposal, and the old ordinance had a thousand feet from 
uh, parks and churches as well, but it is within this body's authority, certainly, to reduce it from 1,000 feet as to uh, the provisioning centers from parks and, um, and from churches as well. But I would very strongly recommend that we remain at 1,000 feet for schools so that we stay out of federal uh, yeah, uh, schools. Yeah, we would also. remain 1,000 feet for schools, but that would be another amendment to the current <laughs> ordinance, 500 feet. Um, churches and parks. Some municipalities have 200, 250 feet. I've noticed that. The circling back on the merit base, um, we discussed Highland Park and Lapeer. How does this merit base um, compare to those ordinances? Did you get a chance to review them? What's the difference between this merit base? And then um, once you answer that question, I want to ask the role the council would play in that overall uh, process you described. I want to circle back on that. Absolutely. So uh, first I'll compare that uh, because we're still in the drafting format, the proposal that you have in front of you set has a rubric that's to be determined. So um, you look at the, you look at Lapeer and you look at Highland, uh, excuse me, Hazel Park and they're doing a merit-based process as well and they're using a rubric that we would present to this body for this body's approval for scoring purposes for the measurement uh, of, of the score for the determination of order. Explain what you mean by that. I'm hearing you but... Sure. So you'd have a scoring sheet with a number of factors and an assigned value to those factors. And so, then, so have those factors been determined other than the examples that I see here? No, uh, those would be brought back for approval from the final rubric before this council, and during this discussion would be an excellent time to raise factors that this body is interested in. So this body would have the authority to reject or accept those factors? That's exactly right. Okay, so what's being proposed here is some s staff people and departments would propose some factors and then they would circle back to council and we would look at those factors and adopt them or turn them down. That's exactly right. Okay, so the, um, then after council looks at those factors and adopts them and turn them down, and after they score it, then the, 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 according, in, in this merit-based system, does that um, final product come to council for any up or down vote? It, it does not, Councilman, and that's where we do get into a difference between Hazel Park and Lapeer, and I'll just touch on that very briefly if that's acceptable. Uh, so Hazel Park uh, actually does have the review process go before the City Council. They have it go to the, plan the um, Planning Commission first for site review, and then once all those are granted, uh, then for light, final step in licensure, they do the uh, merit hearing uh, before the City Council. Uh, but what, what I think because it, the way it works for them that I do not think would work for us is because they are only doing four licenses total, and we are talking about 20 provisioning center licenses alone. Um, so I, and I think that would slow the process down significantly. And the other difference for Lapeer, they have a three-member panel that their city council is appointing, but they're, it's not made up of necessarily of the council. Well, what I would say to you, Mr. Erickson, Attorney Erickson, that I'm, I'm interested in those two models versus this model. This is a new ordinance. It's, it's big. And so when I see all the various department and staff and I want to stay close to this as a council, I'm going to ask that we interject some type of panel and or final review with council similar to Hazel Park and Lapeer. So I, I like what I see here, but that's a little tidbit that I would ask be in this ordinance as well. And so, you know, you, 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 you say they got three licenses, we got 20, um, 13 of them grandfather clause, then seven of them might be new. That's all the reason, you know, I think we can handle seven, we can handle 20. It's just the wheel of what we need to do to stay close to this process. I'm not ready to just turn it over to department heads and others. So I would ask that that council aspect be in that merit-based system. Understood. So just one point that I'd like to clarify is that we would not be reviewing only the seven. We would review all of the applications. All 20. Well, as many as come in. So we put in a cap on 20 as it relates to the dispensary. 
That's true. So you're yes. saying the merit base would also go for the transport security and grow? Not for the grow. So what, what I'm saying is if you have 45 people who want a provisioning center license, even though we only have 20 licenses, to do the merit base to make sure, because the intention of this body was to make sure the best aren't left out, we have to review all of those 45 and then rank them so that the top 20 are the best 20. And that's okay because the staff would do a lot of that work. And by the time it's weeded out from staff and others and selections has been recommended to this council, I think we can read at home and look at stuff too. So that's, I mean, it's somebody going to do it. And then finally it will be a decision made based upon that merit-based approach. So I'm just trying to reconcile, Councilman, where be it could be 50, it could be 60, it could be 23. I understand that. Right, right. No, so what, what, what I'm, I'm not understanding, and I'm not trying to be obtuse here, is where, where the, the line for staff review ends, do we do the top half of the staff scores, go to the council, or how, how does that parse out? That's, that's no, just this what is, I'm asking. This is, this is what I'm looking at. You're going to bring some factors for us. If we approve this ordinance tonight, you're going to circle back with some factors that we would have to look at, correct? That's correct. So once you circle back with them factors, then we'll approve and do and deal with those factors. Then after that, when the staff does their review or whatever, the final would come to council. Understood. So we would bring the completed scores to the council to review? And the ones you left out. Right. So, understood. Yeah. Okay. Now, you said that you've got a model when it comes to Hazel Park and or Lapeer with a different um, flavor of that. That's correct. So, they, it's, it, it can be done. Yeah. Oh, yes, it can, legally. I'm interested in that. Understood. Yeah, because I'm looking at all them departments that you got listed and there's something council is missing. So I'm very interested in that. Because you said yourself, we can change and amend at any time. That, that's absolutely but true. But in this infant stage, I'm interested in that. Understood. Okay. And then um, I would yield now. I've seen Mr. Guerrero, and then I'll finish with the proposed amendments because I'm hoping we can go bam, 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 and, you know, depending on what have to go back in writing and what we can do from the floor, I want to amend this if we can and then adopt it at some point. Okay. Thank I you, would Council. yield to Mr. Guerrero. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Guerrero. Yeah, that, uh, um, just to clarify, are we going to do the amendments after we're done with this discussion? Then no, we're once we're done with this anyway. discussion, we're going to do public speaking, and then we're going to go into... Into the possible amendments on that? Yeah, okay. unless, unless this body wishes to change that, though. So no, whatever, whatever the body's that's, pleasure is. That's, that's fine. With it. I was just wondering just to make sure. And then also I want to touch on the merit system. Is that I really like the way it's proposed in this one. Uh, I know we proposed it last week, and I met with... Uh, Planning and Development and the legal department on looking at this uh, the blind review system. And I think the way that I, the reason that I liked it the way it is without getting counsel involved is because it makes these decisions not political at all. Uh, so that way that the, the staff knows what they're doing, they're looking at these blindly so they don't know who they are and that we don't have to have political type votes yeah, where it's uh, making us do these votes where we could have potential people asking us about questions and stuff like that. It should be done with staff review. That's just my opinion. I don't know what the council believes in, but I just wanted to touch on that subject while I was talking while we were talking about it. That's a good opinion, yeah. sir. Mr. Thank President. You. Councilman, we got, we got uh, uh, would you yield also to well, I would, before I yield, I would just say to Mr. Guerra, it, it, if it ain't political with them doing a blind number, why would it be political with us? We're looking at employees, size, investment. To me, that's mechanical more so than political. And so I kind of respectfully disagree. I would yield to. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Fields. Yes, I have some. Um questions about the number of dispensaries that exist now in the city. Um, I've only heard the number that are estimated in the seventh ward, which the last number I heard were 17. So I'm looking at this cap. How many do we currently have in the city of Flint? Kevin standing to answer that question. So to date, 14 special regulated licenses. That's what I thought. Have been 14. Two. 
Today. Sorry. To date, 14 special regulated use dispensary licenses have been issued within the city. Okay. To, two did not open within a year. Per Chapter 50 of the Zoning Code, you lose your you lose your status if you don't open within a year. So 12 have been 12 actually legally are operating. And to 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 Reed's point earlier, five have been issued cease and desist letters by the Michigan State Police and Lara. I don't know how many of those are still operating or opening, but 12 should be opening. Okay, well then my follow-up question, so I don't know where the 17 came, maybe that was part of the five cease and desist, but anyway, what I want to know is, of those 12 then that already have a license, okay, do you contemplate that of those 12, some of them won't meet the new ordinance requirements and will have to close and or move their facilities? And if so, what's that number? So that, that number is difficult to put, to put a final number on. I think the major difference, remember, is you must be approved both locally and at the state. Currently, you do not have to be approved at the state. So Reed, as Reed mentioned earlier, we do not anticipate all 12 of those will get approval from the state. We could be wrong, but, but just based on what we're seeing thus far with the state board um, not really issuing any licenses to date, we, we don't think it'll be 12. Okay, so, so then my next question is, we don't know of the 12, okay, that legally are operating around the city now, um, how many of those, uh, you know, are in the right zone position or, you know, you, I don't know if you can estimate how many will not follow through. I'm trying to figure out if we're capping this at 20, you know, um, are we talking about this, this economic development opportunity for only an additional eight businesses, in addition, you know, will those twelve be grandfathered in first, or? So the way it's what we're proposing, and this is based on past discussions with this body. Ever all twelve, or if they obtain their state license, they would get grandfathered in. If they if they get their state license, they would be grandfathered in. Keep in mind, though, that that is just a cap on dispensaries. There's the five different use types. So um, there's other uses that we currently do not permit that under the MMFLA ordinance we would be able to permit. Okay, and when you say, just to be sure, for clarification, when you say grandfathered in, it doesn't mean the cap of 20 plus those 12, it means a total of 20 dispensaries around the city. Correct. All right, thank you. And Mr. President. Councilman. And when you say grandfathered in, some of them could be maybe in D2 and D3. So they'll be grandfathered in in that zoning, and we're going to limit and provision incentives to D5 and D6 in this proposed ordinance. That would be a fair statement. D5, D6, E, F, and G. E, F, and G is what? E, F, and G districts are, are uh, industrial and manuf like heavy industrial right. and industrial so districts. That would be, they would be grandfathered in if they are already in a... D2, D3, or whatever, no new ones could come into that, and we would limit um, the opportunity for the ones that's applying now in D5 and D6, and I'm okay with that. We had some discussion whether or not processing should be um, in D5, D6, or just the industrial. What does this ordinance do for processing? So this ordinance proposes that it only be permitted in the industrial, and I, I'm, I appreciate you bringing that up, Councilman, because just yesterday, Laura released an advisory bulletin specifying that if, when it comes to the gases uh, that are pressurized and used for the processing manufacturing, for the creation of the oils through the processing process, um, that if they do not meet certain criteria that they put out on the bulletin, Laura will not even inspect them. And I bring that up because I do think the processing portion, not necessarily the baking, taking the, which is also processing, taking that oil and baking it, that's obviously just making brownies, so to speak. But the actual extraction process of the oil, we do think is industrial and, uh, and belongs in those EF and G and co-located potentially with the growing facilities. Yeah, so we'll, we'll maybe circle back on that. I ain't tripping off of that. Um, also, when it comes to the 5,000 um, square foot um, amendment that we made, the 5,000 square feet, um, that amendment was for provisional centers. 
No, that was for growing, Councilman. That was for growing. Yes. And that was, we had three different categories of grow, correct? The state has the three license, different grow three licenses. Three different categories. Yes. So the one category that we amended was 10,000. We amended it to 5,000. And that's for all grow licenses. All grow licenses. So all, all down all three categories, we've amended that to five thousand. That's exactly right. Okay, so the thirty thousand square foot um, mandate in the ordinance would have been if you have a grow, a dispensary, and a processing center. Um, is it grow in dispensary or grow dispensary in processing? It's what only is the 30,000 square foot mandate? The, the trigger. I'm, I'm asking that because I want to see if it can be smaller. Go ahead. Sure. So the triggering event for that is the combination of provisioning with either processing or growing, and we anticipate both. Those are already allowed to be together without a minimum square footage increase. It's the addition of the dispensing, the provisioning on site, that we have done the proposed 30,000 square foot minimum. And the ration. Well, we lowered the grow already for all three. That's correct. But we haven't circled back on that 30,000 now that we've lowered that from 10,000. So. So, so the way that I'm looking at that, if we've now amended that to 5,000, is it fair to keep that at 30,000? Well, Councilman, uh, I, I, I would propose that it's fair because the rationale we have is we want to uh, limit these uses that we do see as inherently separate. When one is a retail use where you'll have your medical marijuana patients and customers coming in and out throughout the day to, of course, get their, their medical product. And then the other two, the growing and the processing, are strictly employees only. No member of the public needs to or should be there at any time of day or night. However, we have recognized that individuals want to make large investments in the city and they want to buy potentially a large parcel and buy all three licenses and that's a significant amount of revenue so in order to create a carrot for that without necessarily exacerbating the problem that we see with two different traffic type uses is having a minimum square footage requirement to say well if you're going to have a very large facility 30,000 square feet in the city then then we think it is worth taking on that additional two uses having them together to reward that kind of investment let me say this some people thought Einstein was crazy, but Einstein turned out to be a genius. So if I got a doctor who got 5,000 square feet for grow, that's adequate, and he had 5,000 or less square foot for processing and or dispensary, I ain't up to 30,000. And so I don't want to take a doctor out of the mix who might could do something in 10,000 or 15,000 square feet just because we want money at 30,000. So I, 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 I'm looking at amending that 30,000. Um, that's what I'm thinking. I, I understand because that. Because we've amended the 10,000 to 5,000. We have. What do you think an average um, square foot for a dispensary would be? in a D5 or D6. I, I don't think the dispensary footprint would be very large. I think we're talking about the grow and the processing. That's correct. And so the processing would be about what, in your opinion? Bigger than the grow? I think not. Not necessarily. Right. So if the grow is the biggest and we've amended that to 5,000, now that don't keep nobody from coming in here applying in a merit-based system with 10,000, 30,000, or 50,000. We would look at it based upon that. But I can't see myself requiring 30,000 square feet when we done already reduced that down to um, five, and the only driving force is large investment. Well, yeah. Give me another driving yes. force to keep it there, because I heard large investment. Understood. You got another one. 
And in fact, this was also the rationale for the 10,000 square foot minimum for the other two uses as well. And our intention was to balance two interests. We didn't want to cap investment in the city when it comes to these growing and processing licenses. But at the same time, we do have to deal with limited administrative resources, particularly when it comes to police enforcement. So the idea being, we would not put a cap on these licenses, but we would at least try to keep them of such a size that it incentivizes them to co-locate together, because you can have multiple licenses on one parcel. It ain't making sense to me, Attorney Erickson, because if you only going to give out so many, the police know them 20 locations, the grow, the grow, which is unlimited. Now, we can't put a cap on growth because the state issues that license, or can we put a cap on growth? We, we can put a cap on growth. Okay, but y'all didn't recommend a cap on growth. So if you got possible 200 industrial sites, maybe we do want to um, amend it and put a cap on it. Because I'm not going to buy that we just want them big so we can police them. Understood. You know, you can police them by putting a cap on them if you need it to. So I'm listening to all the logic that the, that's coming to me from the planning, the zoning, the legal, and every time I hear the logic that I'm trying to be sold on, that ain't what I'm here for. I ain't here to be sold because my brain work good too. If you can put a cap on dispensaries, you can put a cap on processing and transport, you can put a cap, no, safe security and transport, that's where you got a cap, but now it sounds like we could put a cap on grow if we wanted to. And that's why I want this stuff to stay before the council, because that ain't never been discussed before. So now that don't mean I want to put a cap, but don't sell me on policing it, because if you want to police it, you would have put a cap on it. If you want 200 of them, you ain't concerned really about policing. So you want 200 big ones rather than 40 small ones. That ain't making sense to me. Mr. President, as I think about this, I will yield the floor because I want to knock these amendments out. And Mr. Erickson, you know, I'm ready to adopt and pass an ordinance, but I'm talking about it because we can adopt it and amend it as we go. But I just want to hear the whole discussion. Don't try to sell me on nothing, because I'm going to pick up on it every time. Understood. Councilwoman Fields. OK, I actually would like to see a cap on uh, growing, too. And is it possible to do a cap on processing? Just grow. No, it's entirely within this body's authority. OK, and I'll tell you why. The reason why I would encourage a cap is we all know that industrial sites are becoming, uh, it's kind of at a premium as uh, industry is picking up um, in Detroit area and south of us. And I don't want Flint to just become, you know, we, one of our uh, sources of troubles here was we, we became a one horse GM town. That's all we did. And then when that industry went south, uh, you know, it was devastating. So I think we need to leave more sites available for other types of industry uh, to come in. And there, there is interest, there is growing interest. So I actually would like to see uh, a growing and processing cap, and I'd like some recommendations for what people think is reasonable, because you know we don't have to take every industrial site we have available and just commit it to marijuana. I think that's a really bad idea. That's a really fuzzy idea. And then I have a couple other questions. One is, we no longer have a personal property tax for businesses. Off the top of my head, Councilwoman, I, I can't give out. We I do can't. have a personal property tax. OK, so the reason I'm asking this is, when you were talking about the processing, the machinery, or whatever it's going to take to process this, normally, that would be something that would be taxed. They're obligated to report they have this personal property, these businesses, and we tax it. But my question is, are the marijuana plants themselves going to be considered personal property? And what's the worth of the single marijuana plant? Uh, so that's an interesting question. I, I don't have the, an answer for you as to whether that would count as personal property for tax purposes sitting here. Um, I, I believe the, the worth of a plant probably varies, but I'm sure it's in, in the thousands of dollars. Well, I think we should investigate that because, um, you know, that could be additional revenue to the city. 
definitely. So um, the state ahead. the state has tied our hands when it comes to specific marijuana taxation. So we, we are entitled to 25% of the excise tax that's collected at the state level and 3% in addition to the sales tax. And we are, we are allowed to have fees that we can justify for site review and inspection and so forth. Um, but we I need to check. I, I would have to circle back on whether we could do that. Yeah, on personal property, both the machinery and equipment they need to process and then the plants themselves. That's the question. And then I also want to ask, um, because I missed portions of a couple of meetings. Um, one of the things I'm concerned about is the extra um, need for police presence or whatever. You know, we don't really know what that might be yet, but have we talked about adding something to this that um, all of these three main categories would be required to have their own security personnel? <laughs> May I just say, if we in the ordinances, it is a requirement. There's a I I just I just read it just a few days ago. There's a requirement for. Do you know uh, what page that's on? Let me, let me see. There is a requirement. Yeah, is it just? I think it's just security cameras that require. No, it's more. No, it's it's more detailed than that. I, I read, and I have to go back, Mr. President. Like I got it written up, but there, is a, there, are, there are requirements that they must have security cameras, but also it, the, the, it goes into that those facilities must have uh, security guards on duty while business operations are, uh, are, are um, doing business hours. And there are some other things in there. So I know well, that... I, I'd like to make sure that because uh, in like growing, you know, that's 24-hour growing. Um, I'd like to make sure about that because, you know, take for example, we had someone here uh, speak to the fact that they were interested in the Stevens moving and storage, which is now in the fifth ward. Actually, it used to be in the fourth. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I don't know how many stories that building is, um, many stories. I'm not quite sure the street it's on. But, um, I, you know, I can't imagine not having security personnel on site. Page 14. Page 14. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Councilman Griggs. Uh, right now, the police presence is, is okay with what we have. I can't see that a, what would this be, a 10% increase uh, is going to demand a whole lot more police presence. And also, uh, if I could ask Mr. Scott, what's the total number of industrial sites we have in Flint? I, I, he, said I don't, around, I don't, he said around 200. 200? Well, I can't see us having yeah, 200 marijuana to, sites. If I may, to clarify, that's the, the question from Councilwoman Fields was the number of industrial sites that would be eligible, I believe, under the draft. If your question is the total number of industrial sites within the city, I, I don't have a number on that. I, I don't know offhand. I can we okay, could, well, we could so agree that. Mrs. F Ms. Fields was saying that she was afraid that some of these medical marijuana sites might take up all our sites, and I can't I can't fathom how that would happen. Not if we've got at least two hundred. I don't know. Uh, I can't Mr. see it growing. I, I wasn't quite finished. Oh, I'm sorry. That's worse. I don't, I don't see Briggs, the concern. I'm sorry, so then I'm taking it back from him and I'm giving it back to you. Go right in. Any problem with that, Mr. Griggs? What now? Say it again. She didn't say. She didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. Go ahead. No, no okay. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Now, as I read this quickly, it says that uh, there are many either or. Uh, security measures uh, not limited to lighting, alarms, barriers, recording, monitoring devices, and or security guard proposed for the facility. And it says uh, the plan must contain specifications. And then the marijuana facility, and I assume when you say facility, you're referencing all three types of facilities, must have a security guard present during business hours or alternative security procedures. I, I believe that um, that is an amendment that needs to be changed, must have a security guard present at all times, personally. 
I'd like, I would like to. Understood, Councilwoman. If, if I could very briefly address that, because that is something that actually um, Councilman Mays, when, when we were discussing the amendments that he'd referenced earlier, uh, one of the suggestions, and, and, I, and it is not in the ordinance for the rubric as far as required, but I can assure this body that I, I think it's such a good idea that, it, that I could almost certainly say that it would be in the rubric that we would uh, grant points favorable to applicants who commit to having round-the-clock security similar to the private security, for instance, at Kettering University. Because we can't require them to pay more for police presence, but we can reward them for at least providing security and being less of a burden on police resources. But you're not going to have a rubric for the, is, is all, all three activities going to be merit-based? Not as it stands now, that's correct. So which, which of the three will be merit-based? A provisioning and potentially, but I don't think it's likely if we have more than the, five, the cap of five for the testing and the secure transport. That would be merit-based as well. Okay, so we'd actually need a cap on growing and processing in order to make that merit-based as well. In order to trigger the rubric as it sits, that's correct. We could make an amendment also without a cap. That it is flexible, but yes, that would be a way to implement that. Can, can you see, uh, and or uh, Kevin, please, can you see any downside to putting a cap on uh, growing and, and uh, processing? Why, why haven't you uh, offered that as an alternative now? So that, that is absolutely an alternative. Um, the intention was simply to balance the potential for large, large investment. I mean, to be frank, I don't anticipate uh, medical marijuana provisioning centers to be the size of Meyer when it comes to the provisioning. However, it's entirely possible that a grow facility could be very large and, and, and really use, utilize the industrial corridors and get some investment on parcels where the city's not collecting revenue. Uh, so it was really just an intention to balance the limited administrative resources that we have when it comes to enforcement, but without potentially leaving large investment off the table, so to speak. Uh, so it was simply an attempt at a balancing act, but it is entirely within this body's authority to do a cap. The only con that I would see to a cap as we sit here now for growing and processing would mean that we almost certainly triple the merit review because now we are reviewing grow and processing as well. Well, I still think, you know, it's really important to, you know, there is a medical need out here for this and there are reasons why we've all talked about opting in, but at the same time, you know, I don't think we should opt into the exclusion of other economic development opportunities. And if we don't put caps on these, I don't want to see all of our industrial sites snapped up, as has happened in other communities around the country. All the industrial sites, okay, were snapped up for marijuana. And I'd like us to see um, other industries come in. Then. I'd like to offer this, then maybe that's something that this body then could, could uh, do in, in creating an ordinance that would prohibit what it is you're, you know. It puts a cap on it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't even have to be a cap in this, but it could be just a, a standalone ordinance that's, that, uh, that, that specifies that how uh, our industrial areas could be used. Mr. Mr. President. Well, that's... I got you. I'm coming yeah. to you, Councilman. Go ahead. I can see where you're going with that, but mm -hmm. since we're dealing with this now, one of the easiest ways to do it was, would be to put a number. You don't have an argument for me? Mr. President. I thought, hold, on, hold on, hold on just a okay, second. Hold okay. on. Councilman Mays. Then I'm coming to you, Councilman Okay, Bridge. just on, just as a caveat to that, and that's how I'm hoping this conversation flow when we hop on a subject matter, try to knock it out so we can be ready to make amendments. But one of the people who had been texting me, emailing, and communicating, it's a group, um, they say it one way of doing it, they refer to this ordinance 180151, subsection C6. 180151, subsection C6. 
that the language could be the city of Flint through its city council has the regulatory right to limit the number of locations and number of provisioning centers permitted under this ordinance. Point, point of has, information. Mr. Mace, what page is that? I'm sorry, I'd like to follow this. Oh, I don't know what page it's on. I'm just giving a subsection of one of the um, opportunities that they say this language that would be in bold black print could maybe fall up under, so it's they saying the section might be um, C, subsection C, subsection 6. Mm -hmm. So maybe, um, can you answer that? But this language would be, if I may continue, the city of Flint through its city council has the regulatory right to limit the number of locations and the number of provisioning centers permitted under this ordinance and has the right to revise this limit from time to time by City of Flint City Council resolution. And so if that language was put in there, they uh, think it might um, keep us from having to do second reading, first reading, and that type of thing, some okay. specific language. Now, Makes through sense. you to the city attorney, if you're following that, then I, you, you could give feedback. I do follow you, Councilman. And uh, so where section C6 would go would be on page 10. You won't see a 6 on page 10 because 6 would be a new subsection under subsection C. So you'll see the 5 there, and that would be, and then there's a subsection Roman numeral I under 5, and then that's end section C, you move on to D. So that's where in the ordinance uh, that C6 would uh, be placed. Um, my caution to that approach only would be that it could place the city in a precarious, not, not totally uh, irreversible, but a precarious situation where if we have more licenses granted and the city chooses to move back later, and this is a concern that I think has come up before, can we opt out? And the short answer is wholesale opt out I think would be relatively simple. We would simply not renew the ordinance and give facilities notice that their licenses would not be renewed because the city is not reopting in. Getting to where we want to reduce the number of licenses is possible, but I think the way that we could do that without risking legal liability would be to have the ordinance strictly enforced, which of course we intend to anyway, but any violations whatsoever we would hold against licensees and not renew their licenses and that would be and then simultaneously reduce or create a cap but in the event that we're simply not renewing um, and we don't have that kind of nuisance violation criteria to support us I, I think it may be difficult for us to choose which licenses we renew and which ones we don't not to say that it's impossible but I do think it puts us in a more difficult situation it's much easier to add licenses than subtract without getting rid of all of them okay well I just wanted to add that in um, I think that as I listen to the public speak on this um, the 30,000 square foot. I don't know if we've settled on anything yet, but you know people can come in with 50,000. I think I was contacted by somebody from Wild Bills who I think they said in some city they was doing maybe, I don't want to say it wrong, but they might have said 320,000 square feet um, grow and they going to have dispensaries around the state of Michigan, a $20 million investment. So if we gave the smaller opportunity for a smaller business person, if they, if they got it based upon merit, fine. But if a bigger one came in and scored and they got it, fine. So I don't think that limiting that 30,000 feet and winding that down hurts somebody who want to do 100,000 square feet. I just don't see the logic where it does. If you see it, tell me, because I'm not buying the logic of um, the police aspect. I think we've talked about that if we want to do a limit on growth. I don't know if I... It, I don't know where I want to go on the limit on growth because if we did um, put a limit, you know, and I seen it doing something, I might come back and amend that limit. And I don't know if I would want my limit on growth to be 30, 40, or 50, or 100. I don't know. 
But um, I do think I know that I want that 30,000 to be shrunk down to maybe 10,000 because the grow is the largest at 5,000. And um, if you're going to do a, 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 a provision and center and processing on the same site, I don't want to jump from 5,000 to 30,000. Reed, I'll listen to you when we get to that actual amendment and see what you think. Now this exemption, the exemption that I'm looking at if I had to do a medical an exemption for a doctor that's actually an applicant, um, I've seen the things that could happen with some of them catch words, but this exemption might be if the doctor is the actual applicant and if they are doing a grow, a processing, and a provisioning center all on the same site. If they are doing all three of them and the doctor is an applicant, I think I can go with that exemption. And with that exemption, exempt them from the residential buffer and the others or they would still conform with the others. What's your thoughts on that? Councilman, the, the, the version that was distributed by Councilwoman Fields earlier does have the requirement, like you stated, that um, for this medical research facility exemption, you would have to be a Michigan licensed physician. Um, it does not require that you have all three licenses together, but it does require you to be a minimum 20,000 square foot facility. That's, that's feedback that, that we got on this exemption. I would respectfully submit that if this body is looking at reducing the 30,000 square foot um, co-location requirement, um, for the reasons I said earlier, I wouldn't necessarily endorse that, not that you necessarily need me to do so, uh, but in the event that this body was looking to reduce it, uh, I think 20,000 square feet as this medical uh, location would require would, would be a comparable number then for, for that as well, um, but it does uh, require um, them to be an actual Michigan licensed physician for this locational requirement for medical research. Um, well, with it, the other um, parts of the ordinance come into play, if they got that <coughs> exemption, would they still, of course, would have to uh, conform to the thousand feet regulation. They would also, what, have to conform to the residential buffer and or if we amended 500 feet, all of those would come into play. The exemption don't knock all that out. What are you thinking there? The, the original exemption that was discussed previously actually did abolish all of those. The proposal that I have in front of you uh, simply excludes it from the 300 foot residential requirement and applies 500 feet to parks and churches and 1,000 from schools nonetheless. And so that's the proposal we have in front of us. Yes. So if we, if we vote on that amendment, then um, that would be, it would include the 500 feet even before we amend it, and it would also in, um, take away the 300 um, residential buffer. It would be a locational exemption for this kind of definition, yes. Okay. Um, I might move on that one. Um, Mr. President, I'm going to need a little time. I'll listen to the public and then I'll be ready to get down to business and make some um, amendments. Thank you. Councilman Griggs. Okay. Mr. President. It seems that we have a cap already of 20 places, sites, and we've got 12. I don't think we need to concern ourselves with us getting too many sites. This is this is starting to remind me of the little town mentality uh, that that's very resistant to any, resistant to anything new coming to town. Uh, I had that same problem four years ago when I started a new type of business, and I met with a hundred percent resistance from the city. Uh, it was terrible, and I feel sorry for any of these people trying to start a new business in this town. Uh, I think we need to find out who is the busiest of these dispensaries 
and when somebody can identify that, then the concerned council people go sit in their car and watch those businesses and see what kind of security is really required. I think the only security that's going to be required is keeping people from robbing them because they're dealing on cash only. The police need to be there to protect the businesses. We don't need protection from the clients. I haven't heard bad things about the clients other than anti-pot people. And uh, we really need to know what that busiest one is. I hope you can tell us who it is. And these concerned council people, I'll do it myself, will go sit out there in their parking lot for a few hours and see what all this crime is about. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Council. Councilwoman Fields. Um, first, to reply to Mr. Griggs, uh, I've never been concerned about the clients being the criminal element. I am concerned about the businesses and the need for police presence because it's going to be a lot of cash, okay? And, and the product itself is worth a lot of money. So that's where my concern comes from. I'm not concerned about the clients being the criminal element. Mr. Griggs, uh, I hope you heard me. Okay. Um, but I, I also wanted to get back to, because we've kind of jumped from this to that to that, but one more time. I have asked um, our planner, uh, Mr. Schwantz, uh, to work with uh, our attorney, Mr. Erickson, on coming up with a recommended cap for a number for both um, growing and processing. And once again, I just want to repeat, you know, if we take up or are we allowed to be taken up all of our industrial sites for just those businesses? You have to think about, yeah, there will be jobs there, but these jobs will be limited to probably slightly over minimum wage, minimum wage and over, and maybe a couple jobs at a higher management level. But when you have businesses that come in like Lear Corporation, okay, that has, they have much more depth in the terms of what they do and the need for, um, employees that have, you know, it's, it's very different. And so I just don't want to have, you know, and I ask everybody to ask themselves, you know, do you want your kids and grandkids to have the only jobs available to them because they're the only industries in town, because they've taken up the only sites for industry in town? Is their only option here in Flint is to go to work for a marijuana grower? at 15 an hour? Or do you want to see some other industries come in where there's potential growth and modernization and looking at all kinds of different things? So I think capping um, the number of these centers is extremely important to me personally anyway. Okay. Any other council persons? This is the April 12th City Madam of Clark, Flint brings us to special city council meeting. Okay, our first public speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Council, Mr. President. Good afternoon. My name is R. L. Mitchell. I design at 759 East Linden Avenue over on Northside with Grace Line Cemetery. I can actually see the cemetery from my backyard where my auntie was buried. I can actually see her grave from my backyard and my mama grave from, she just passed away about eight months. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to the situation like Mr. City Attorney, Mr. Garrick, talked like uh, putting the cap on this situation, marijuana situation for we can get, it's crunch time, Mr. President. Notice, look around. It started from one of your recipient Neighborhood, Miss Galloway. You notice she she ain't here when it's time to crunch town, crunch time. But we still gonna get it done tonight. And Fifth Ward was here, but in another thing, this Seven Ward. What's the value to you, to the city attorney? What's the value of a student, uh, Mr. City Attorney? Uh, when I was in that ward, I was transferred to a, from Whittier School to McKinley School. And we had to have the police exports to get us in there. Now I'm wondering if they put a, a cap on it because they never did rebuild Whittier and Central, still standing there. And like you, Mr. President, talking about trying to come up with an idea to keep from capping stuff. 
talking about it's impossible to keep the police, the police are automatically going to kick in and do their job to protect an African American going in the white neighborhood. That's what I see. What's the value of a student, Mr. Mr. Uh, City Attorney? Put a cap on a black student. That's what it's all about. And another thing, it's been about 40 years and it still ain't got the situation fixed yet. Every time we get ready to put crunch time, crunch time on this situation, you and Miss Worthing and that guy with the gray beard come talking about what's the use of having police to protect it. The people, and but, but she was right, so nobody don't mess with your people buying their medicine. Where she at? She leaked. She never, and all that junk dude always coming up with some excuse to filibuster around before we never get to the point. And you up there talking about industrial city and about these churches. There's three churches in this city. Andy out and in the other church of God in Christ, Selby Street, and but St. George Mathel. There's well, 24 inch screen general motors. I want this general motor to them out to have, but they still got the land. And talking about this dude up there, you let him go first, and came and get a straight answer out of it. Man, and Mr. President, you up, you know what, you would know it's crunch time, dude. Take that. Jump. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Our next speaker is Mrs. Uh, Rina Griffel. Mrs. Griffel. Ms. Griffel. She's gone. Okay. Pastor Alan Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. She's gone too. Uh, Mrs. Joy Palladino. Ms. Palladino. Oh, Tony. Pa I'm sorry, Mr. Tony. Mr. Tony Palladino. Sorry. I feel good after yesterday. It's Joy. Mr. Tony, Tony Palladino. Palladino. Thank you. He's out front. You can call me Joy. It don't happen much. Uh, Mr. Mitchell's right. It's, it's crunch time. I think you need to pass some of this, but more importantly, like Eric and them say, we got to go through this a little bit. And uh, I know the value of a plant. You got junk weed and you got some primo stuff. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to get a dime bag. You guys understand. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong way. I know a potent brownie because I've ate them. You know? Too much. I don't eat them a lot, but I've had them. I don't like them. And and Leah smokes. She's got a card. And without that card, we've probably been divorced 20 years ago. Um, so you need to look at a camp. Why do you need a cap? And why are you worried about the industry? We haven't had nobody come in here industrial-wise in 40 years. I say if they want the property, come get it. Now is the time. They got us all tore up so they can come get this stuff. That's why we don't have golf courses. That's why we don't have service. They got all this stuff depleted and tore up so they can come in and get it for really, really cheap rates. Question, are you gonna keep them taxed? Are you gonna freeze them? Are you gonna forgive them? Are you gonna do like they did the Flint Journal on us? Ooh, let's build this journal for 37 million. Let's give them a tax break for 8 million and then fire them all. Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna put that burden of them towers on us? See, I've been here a long time too. You gonna come into my neighborhood finally? Oh. You guys going to come into my neighborhood and fix it up? You just put $50 million in housing. What are you guys doing to the residents? I keep saying that. I got another one. Hey, Kevin. Is this going to absorb that stupid-ass street lights tax? They're going to take that off us? Because they're going to be using a lot of power for that. Is this the reason why the KWA was formed so we can get that raw water? We told you it was coming. It was either raw water for plants or slaughtering animals. And let's just get it straight. The property that all them houses sat on on the east side, that's not toxic. The stuff along the river is. You ain't fooling us. So I think if you bring something in there, you need to let that get back into the neighborhoods. And I also want to say something. I stood here the other night and I said, you guys need to get on this bus. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, you little hustler. I ran with this guy around there. Um, yeah, I know, but it, it, it's, it's Santino to me. I know his family, but the thing is, I know some of you guys can't make it. The 25th, we're getting on the buses again. We tore them up yesterday. They walked out on us. They didn't listen to us. It felt so familiar. You understand what I'm saying? It felt so familiar. Now, I think you need to pass this, but on top of this, 
Give us another chance to come in and speak about what you're doing and what we can do. I would love to go in and sweep up weed. You know, I would love to have a job driving a little forklift around. And, and let's be realistic. Marijuana also makes bricks. There's other things besides pot. You can build houses out of that. Serious. So you, need, you want industry? Let's put some housing back together. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. The 25th, please. Let's get on the buses or come on down. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. Thank Thanks. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Mr. Keith Olson. Mr. Mr. Olson. Olson. Hi, my name is Keith Olson. I run criminalized racketeering against patients. I'm a, I'm a cannabis manufacturer and an extraction artist. I'm here today to talk about the ordinances. Um, Michigan has attacked the community for a decade under the MMMA. Now we got the MMFLA, the Facilities Licensing Act, and nobody's doing anything for us patients. It's all for the money, it's all for the corporate interests. You know, our patients have been attacked for a decade. Countless families have been destroyed under the drug war, uh, many of our own. And uh, thankfully, Flint and Genesee County really hasn't gone along with the Michigan program on this medical marijuana stuff. You know, now Flint wants a piece of the action, a piece of the pie in the MMFLA, and that's fine. That's great. Patients need safe access. But these ordinances don't do much for the ill and dying patients. Like I said, we need safe access, and we need the MMMA. Uh, there's been a lot of things talked about here that I disapprove of, uh, doctor's exemptions for ones. Uh, our whole act has been messed up by doctors. We get recommendations. We don't get prescriptions. There's doctors in this state that have written 80 percent of the recommendations illegally. There's uh, a majority of the doctors writing prescriptions right now are suspended. So if we want a doctor to have a licensed doctor, I would recommend you put in there not a suspended licensed doctor which is what signs most of our recommendations. Uh, I'm against the Michigan seed to sale laws. I believe they're just trying to make a price fixing their own commodity, uh, keeping the community out of this. Some of the best cannabis in Michigan is grown in Genesee County and Flint right here by guys like me. Uh, there's no reason for us to not be able to participate. Right now, the state will tell you that the provisionary centers don't have their grows. They're supposed to buy it from the caregivers. But they're not. They're growing it themselves. They're importing it. And the caregivers are cut out. You know, Flint and Genesee County could uh, set up an auction house, a clearing house, to purchase this cannabis from the community and let that go into the uh, provisionary centers and that. And it would help everybody out across the board. Uh, I propose an amendment, amendment as well for the auction house. I think you guys should put an amendment on there for an auction house so we can all be a part of this so everybody can get a piece of the pie. Uh, the application scoring systems have been attacked under civil court. Just this week in Arkansas, they launched a bunch of lawsuits. All these scoring systems, all the applicant things, that's all subject to lawsuits. Y'all can get sued over all that stuff. Um, Mr. Mays is correct. The square foot requirements are just ridiculous. Uh, a pr uh, processing center could operate in 20 foot by 40 foot. We don't need 10,000 square feet. Uh, and I would also like to say that I think you guys are making a good idea to get a citizen's board to look through the applications, find suitable ones, put them together up to you guys so you don't have to sit and waste six months of council meetings. And I nominate myself, Keith Olson, to help you. Hit me an email at Keith L. Olson, K-E-I-T-H-L-O-L-S-O-N at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to help you all out. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Madam Clerk. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Ron DeCicio. Mr. DeCicio. Good, after good afternoon, council members. Thank you for hearing me. I've spoke before you many, many times. Uh, as an uh, adjunct to the last speaker, uh, I feel that it is a form of economic discrimination to have a 5,000 square foot grow on a 500 plant. The only thing that's mandated fees by the state is a 500 plant grow at $10,000. All other licenses 
through the state are $46,000 now. So if you stack three licenses in one location, you're looking at a fee, an annual fee of almost $150,000. And to my point, we are better off diversifying our base for industry by encouraging smaller businesses. As a licensed plumber, electrician, and third generation builder, I understand Mr. Erickson's need for huge providers. However, uh, I can tell you, you're cutting out two thirds of the people that want to be in this industry. So I would encourage you to revitalize existing industrial space, lower the space required for a 500 plant grow, because that's only $10,000 from the state to maybe 2,000 or 2,500. To his point, he's correct. You don't need 30,000 square feet for processing. You need 20 by 20, 20 by 40. Dispensaries, maybe 1,000 square feet. What we see now in Colorado is all these massive grows that are indoor are now closing because it is becoming so competitive because there's a flood to market, prices are dropping. So if I can grow outdoors in a greenhouse for $400 a pound as opposed to indoors under artificial lights for $600, all these huge industrial grows now are starting to close. They're opting for sophisticated greenhouses and even outdoor growing. So I don't want to see Flint in a situation three or five years from now where we have all these massive industrial grows that are closing because people are moving out to the country where they can build a greenhouse and they can produce cannabis at 20, 30, 40, 50% less. But my point, the most important point here, is there's so much industrial property that's small that three or four people could go in on and produce jobs for the local economy and more importantly, to his point, there is a difference in cannabis. Smaller growers are much more prone and likely to deliver a superior project, the product rather. These huge industrial grows like you see in Pinconi and Bangor, where they have 29 stack licenses for one provider and 39 stack licenses, they're interested in volume, volume, volume. There's a huge percentage of people that use this that appreciate quality product. And you're going to get that from smaller growers. So I would truly recommend on the Class A licenses reducing the minimum square foot because rather than because just like GM, they can be out of here tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. DeCessio. Our last speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Woodson. This, this will probably be the first time that I don't even use my full three minutes. Um, security, I heard Ms. Fields speaking about security. Let's not wait until the last minute to go over to Genesee County and do an MOU with them. I hear that we gonna, you know, everybody's saying let's use all this industrial and everything else. Swartz Creek, Davidson, Flushing, Flint Township, they're not going to, they, they probably won't even open up one, uh, you know, dispensary or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, Genesee County gets 30%. All we get is what, 1%? And they get uh, money for security, for the police. Why not do an MOU? Because we're going to put all the money in there. What do they need to uh, guard uh, Swartz Creek and all these other places and they're not putting any money in? They not, I mean, why, why should they even be out there? So we need to do an MOU with Genesee County and say, hey, listen, we, we're contributing the majority of the funds, so your, our resources need to be here in the city of Flint. Do that before doing anything else, because what I have noticed is if you don't have it in writing, they, they, they uh, uh, tend to uh, not honor words anymore. Then Mr. Uh, Eric. Is there any way that we can uh, go back and pardon all the people who have been convicted of marijuana? Can you go in there and do that? The ones that have been convicted of a misdemeanor, then you go talk to Mr. Layton and see if you can do it for the county. Then but all y'all go down to the state and get them out from the state. Because John Boehner now, he was way against it at first. But now all of a sudden, it's a big business He's on the board of one of the biggest one now. Yeah. It's a lot of money in this. I read yesterday that Colorado made enough money to fund the educational system out there. It's a lot of money in this. What we need to do uh, after everything is done, I know we can't do it right now, but after everything is done, we need to go down to the state and 
forced them to change these laws to where the, munis the munis municipalities can make the money. Because right now, as it stands, the state gets all the money. They are really pimping us for real. They got us doing all the work while they sit back and take all the money. And this should be benefiting Flint instead of ben benefiting the legislators up there because it's going to be just like that uh, responsibility fee where they was taking all the money and we never knew where it went. So we really need to uh, address these issues after because I see that y'all are really working and uh, Ms. Williams and everyone is really working with y'all on this and trying to get it right. So thank you. But really check on the MOU and talk to the county so that we don't have to use our resources from us putting all the money in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Madam Clerk, would, would, we don't have any more speakers. No, that's, that was the conclusion of the speakers. Okay. That brings us to our ordinances. Mr. Mr. President. Uh, Councilwoman Field. Uh, I just have a bit of a special request uh, because we've been talking about these medical research facilities, but it doesn't talk about what they're researching. So um, I, uh, I would ask for a bit of a special privilege to let one of the doctors who's involved in, in marijuana medical research come up and spend a few minutes to tell us what that research consists of. Dr. Nakada, please. And then we get our 10 minutes of comment, too. How many? Two, sorry. Oh. Two. Yeah, I did say 10, but two. Oh, okay. Right. Hello, Council. Um, thanks Hi. for uh, having me speak. Um, so to kind of discuss just about research and what we're actually doing, um, currently we're focused uh, on pain management. Um, that's uh, really the, what brought me here to Flint and why I kind of uh, started doing this uh, work here. We're working on ways to dose cannabis and apply it in a practical medical sense. So, you know, when it comes to using marijuana, we're not about smoking it in, in joints and, and eating brownies. It's not really what kind of we do on the medicine side. So we need to isolate different compounds. We need to see what works, where it works, how it works. We have a lot of information that is available to us, and now the next step is taking that further. Um, we plan on using uh, different technologies and, and processing methods to isolate the specific cannabinoid compounds and further studying them and seeing what medical um, uses they will have and, and how they work. Um, that's going to be the basis of the research that we want to conduct. Currently, we're already participating with the University of Michigan and actively recruiting patients for a pain management study currently. Kevin? Um, I, I'm not sure if, there, if you need more detail about exactly what we're doing. I can um, mention the some opioid. Options. Yes. Um, so yes, that's I mean, obviously that's one of the main issues right now is the opioid crisis. Um, you know, there's a big push to decrease opioid use, and, and those mandates are even coming as far as uh, Medicare at this point. They, they're actually looking at limiting the amount of opioids that can be prescribed at any one given time. Um, and that's going to produce a, a separate issue in the medical field because as we reduce the number of narcotics, there's going to be people who would draw the people who are dependent currently. And we need different ways and, and options on how to manage that. Um, cannabis is, is being looked at in multiple ways to be used in that um, field. Um, a lot of the research is, is going that way. The Journal um, of American Medical Association, JAMA, just recently published an article stating that um, cannabis should be one of the uh, primary uh, options as used for uh, opioid uh, management uh, in pain management. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I would um, move some amendments. I'd like to make a motion that we um, amend some things. Now, okay. my question to the council is, do they want to go one by one and just read them off? One by one? I, okay. What's, I, what's, I, the, what's the pleasure of the council? Uh, Mr. President, I would like us to have our two minutes of comment after public speaking. Okay. Per our rules. We, we will get that, but let's, let's answer the council's question. We will get our two minutes, but what's, what's, the, uh, what's the council's pleasure? One by one. One by one, or are you, are you going to? One by one. Oh, one, by one. one by okay. one. Okay. All right. So then 
Uh, we'll start with uh, Councilman Griggs. Councilman Griggs, this is where we're, we've got two minutes. We're going to respond to our public speakers. You're starting. Uh, to Mr. Woodson, when he was talking about uh, us not getting a very big piece of the pie, uh, the only way we can get more money into Flint for the medical marijuana is to fight with the state. Uh, we're stuck with how much we're, such a small percentage that we're going to gain from the, from the uh, income from this. Our, our fight for more money is with the state. It's not within the city. Uh, we're getting a very small amount of money from the state, but that's, that's my comment to Mr. Woodson. He said that we need more money, and I totally agree. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Okay. Councilwoman Fields. I'd like to respond to a couple things. Um, you know, the more I hear about this medical research facility, I really think it is important because, uh, you know, I personally am one of those people. You know, I'm old. I have a lot of things that hurt, and I've had some very mild opiates in the past. Uh, with good reason, and now they're cutting them off. And I have a lot of friends and neighbors and even colleagues, I think, that, um, you know, this is, this is going to be a problem because the pain exists and how do you deal with it? So I think the research aspect is really, really important the more I think about it, especially since our legislature has gone way, you know, swung the pendulum way over the other side. Uh, about the ability to get any type of even mild pain reliever. So I think that's important. And the other thing, to Mr. Woodson, I absolutely agree with him. You know, one, we need to talk to the state legislators because I don't even understand why the counties are getting 30 percent at all. As far as I can tell, they're not doing anything. And, um, you know, and so the city of Flint, who now has a responsibility for all the, the staffing and the activities and the police and whatever. so. You know, we could do an MOU. They may not want to, okay, but we have no hammer if we don't have our legislators responding to. And I'd actually like a response from somebody. I don't know if Mr. Erickson knows, but why the, he why the heck were the counties given 30% to begin with? I'm very sorry, Councilwoman. Uh, if you could repeat the question for me. Wake up. <laughs> What, why you. are the counties getting 30 percent in the state legislation? Anyway? What's the rationale? Frankly, that's a question for the for the state legislature because that was determined when the MMFLA was passed. That was long before it even even got to our desks. Um, but that's set by the state. We have no say in that. Have, Mr. Erickson, have we attempted? to talk with the county, like the sheriff's department, et cetera, to see what we're going to get for their 30 percent? Have we talked to anybody at the county? I, I don't believe. Now, one thing that I, that I would point out, it's only in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, there is a bill to uh, give communities who are not receiving the direct police services from the county to receive the county's uh, county sheriff share because they're but that's only in committee I can't say that that will pass but it is at least a discussion that's being had at the state level. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councilman Garrett. Yeah, I just wanted to respond. Uh, I think that that's what Mr. Woodson was talking about. We're working with state legislators and getting some more things more productive for the local government body. It's definitely <coughs> something I think we should be working on. Uh, and then also to Tony about dealing with the taxes and the abatements and freezes. I do have an amendment here that's all written up, and I'm going to propose that in a little bit for you. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> only thing I would like to say <clears throat> in regards to the medical marijuana situation, uh, I don't like the idea of economic discrimination because it should be inclusive of whoever running a professional establishment. They should, if they want to be part of the growth of this new industrial since we just opting in, it shouldn't be so high that whoever wants to be in business cannot afford to be in business whether it be the 300 foot, I mean 3,000 foot to 5,000 distance. After all, we're talking about medical marijuana, not recreational. And as well as the medical research facilities. 
a medical research facility should be considered as such. When I spoke with Mr. Nakadar, it was on, like I said before, pills or whatever to enhance a person's life, to make them feel better. That's for research. But uh, it should be exemptions inside of that, as well as exemptions inside of the, the growth or the dispensaries inside a certain zoning to where we make it more inclusive of the residents. After all, we want economic development. That's what I'm thinking in Genesee County, especially Flint. But uh, we want to consider that we don't leave people out, and it's good that we're going with the merit-based system as well, so that just the big boys can only play this game. It's got to be inclusive of the residents. And uh, I, I'm just kind of lost because we're talking medical marijuana. Why is it such a concern, unless it's a side to it people really don't want to respond to, of, of such a hard zoning ordinance, which this is not supposed to be for people that just get high and, and, and be just drugged out. Should not be. But I think it should be treated as such for medical conditions, people that really need this medication. That's what I'm looking at. And uh, I'm saying we should be inclusive without discriminating, making it the shelf so high, can't nobody participate in a professional manner that want to run an establishment or a business. We're done. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Davis. Yeah, I would just say all of the people who's been watching, I hope that you'll continue as we shape and continue to amend these ordinances. I appreciate the input from you today, and um, I think we're going to make some amendments here. Thanks. Okay. What is the council's pleasure with ordinance number 180151.1? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah. Um, I would first like to make an amendment as it relates to the square footage for the licensing. You've got three categories of license. Um, what, what's your page citation, Councilman? Beg your pardon? What, what's your page, what, what page are you on? I refer to Attorney Erickson for that. Okay. What I'm going to propose is about 2,000 square foot for license. What is that, A class? Why do you want me to refer to them? Class A, B, and C, or one, two, three? A, B, and C are the, uh, the three sub-license types for growth. Okay. Compliment. So for a class A license, I would propose 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. For a, a class B license, I would propose... 5,000 square feet, and for a class C license, I would propose um, 8,000 square feet. Point of information. Minimum. Now, it could be more, but those are the minimum That's proposed the, requirements. Into discussion. Okay. What's your point, what's your point Council Mormon? Uh, I'm just trying to follow this. So as okay. we go down these each of these uh, ordinances, could you could someone please refer us to the page so I can follow which uh, yeah. Yeah, the attorney section this is? And if I may finish that motion on square footage when she gets a point of information. Okay. So as to square feet, Councilwoman Fields, uh, for the Grove facilities, there's two references for that. The first is on page three, and the, the second is on uh, page 29. And one other thing that I would point out is you'll only see one number, 5,000, because we've just treated the Groves together. We've not, di we've not differentiated between a, 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 B, and C class of Grove license, which the state does. Okay, so once again, point of information. So... What we've been given is what has been recommended so far. And just to be clear, Mr. Mays is recommending a different amount than what is in the written ordinance so far? Yeah, our ordinance just does not break it down into the A, B, C, me, and classes issued from the state. Councilwoman Fields, let's let Councilman Mays finish his motion so that we can get it into discussion. Your okay. point of order has been addressed. So we need to get the whole 
get your your your, your motion, all, your complete motion, Councilman, so we can okay. get discussed. I'll, I'll start over. Okay. I'll move that the Class A license have a minimum square footage of 2,000. The Class B um, license has a minimum square footage of 5,000, and the Class C license have a minimum square footage of 8,000, and the um, 30,000 square footage that we reference, I would um, put that square footage um, down to that's the one that has the more the, the combination. Mm -hmm. I would um, put that square footage down to nine thousand. Nine. Nine. Oh, okay. And that would be the move. That, that would be the motion I would make as to the square footage. Okay. Point, point, of it's, it's, point of information. What's your point, Council? Well, he's, he's quoting these values, but he doesn't say instead of. And I'm we sorry. can't, and we can't so find the talk, instead Talking to the mic, I can't hear you, sir. Point of, point of order. What's I, your point? He's what saying, if you got a point of information? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. It, it, it's, he's saying like 2,000 instead of. I mean, I'm, I just, don't know what these instead ofs are. Not, it's not an instead of. It's not an instead of, Councilman. It's a, it's a change. He wants to well, change. Well, I'm changing five thousand to two thousand. Yeah. But I don't know what the other changes are from then, to. Can I can I can I say this, sir? Can okay. We, can we get to that late? You, you move. So you want to know what the number we're moving it from or to? Yeah. Right. Okay. I got you. That'll be in the discussion. <laughs> right. If we get there. Yeah. Okay. Can we do that? All right. Proceed. Is that, That's the motion. You're done. Okay. It's, uh, is there a second for that motion? It's been moved and second. Now we get into the discussion. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Through you to Mr. Griggs and to the council, the state issues three different licenses, a class A, a class B, and a class C. The Class A, I think you grow about 500 plants. The Class C, I think you can grow, what, 1,500? So the more plants you grow, the higher the price you pay for a state license. And so what I wanted to do for the little guy, I wanted to shrink that to 2,000 for the Class A. I wanted to go for the Class B at 5,000 and then for the Class C at 8,000 minimum. Now they can come in and propose more square footage because we are gonna judge them on a merit-based system. If we decide that somebody coming in instead of 2,000 and they propose they coming in at 10,000, we'll look at that. They might beat the 2,000 out, but these are minimum requirements on square footage knowing that they could come in in their proposal with more square footage. But I think based upon what they'll actually be doing in these um, facilities, then that would be the right square footage. Through you to the city attorney, these square footages as I'm proposing them, do you look at that as square footage for what? Provisional centers, grows, processing, do we have to Councilman, as I understand it, this is strictly for the grow. That's what this amendment is about. Uh, um, yeah, because we didn't have square footage for the provisional centers at all. That's correct. They can come in with whatever they propose. That's correct. So this is particularly relating to the grow, and then the 9,000 is particularly relating to the grow that houses processing and or provisional so a combination thereof that's what the 30,000 was yes right so that would be the motion I, I hope it's understood okay. or if people want to talk about it more councilwoman fields yes uh, I do want to talk about it more because you just confused me at one time I thought we were talking on page three about the minimum of square feet that's required for a growth center 
And then you made something about, you said something about the number of plants. We're not talking about number of plants, right? We're just talking about num minimum square feet for the facility. If I may. The Council. license is issued from the state based upon the number of plants you will grow in that facility. And I think Attorney Erickson and others can tell you that it's anywhere from 500 in the Class A to the Mr. Erickson. That's yes, right. I would right. first like, I have other questions, but I would first like to know the number of plants allowed uh, in an A, B, and a, C. B, and C. Yes, a, so a Class A license allows for up to 500 plants. A Class B license allows for up to 1,000 plants. And a Class C license allows for uh, up to 1,500, 1500 plants. So, for instance, at, at Class C, 8,000 square feet, I think that works out to about five square feet per plant, which is about, what, two and a quarter by two and a quarter? It's, that's pretty tight space, but... It's on, it's on page seven of the ordinance, Miss. Yeah, I don't want, you know, we're for cage-free plants, okay? <laughs> so, um, so, point of information, that's, is that the only one you concerned about is the class C? I, I just was just uh, out of a curiosity more than anything just doing a little math here I had it just haven't you uh, divided it by the others. concerned about that? No it's okay. just a matter of fact. Okay I, I have two additional questions. Okay. okay. Go ahead. One I, I'm not understanding where the uh, 30,000 square feet thing is coming in. How, how is this relevant to to the size, minimum size for a facility for growing? So the 30,000 square foot requirement is really uh, used as a tool because the approach in drafting this ordinance and before bringing it to this body was that as a matter of planning, um, growing facilities and processing are strictly employees only. There's no need for the public to be there, period, and they're often the industrial areas and they, as a general rule, probably don't want to attract a lot of attention. Provisioning centers, of course, require patients to be there on a daily basis or near daily to, to keep the business alive, of course. And so our rationale was that those, uh, those two uses were separate and should be kept separate. Uh, through the discussions, we did have feedback from the community that we didn't want to cut off people who wanted to make a large investment in the city. So what we tried to do was balance those two competing factors and create a carrot, if you will, that if you want to make a large investment, that you're that committed to the city of Flint, then we will, in effect, suspend the concern we had with those two uses and allow them to be together. The, the analogy that I think fits well for Flint is, of course, that you don't typically build cars on the site that you sell them. You, you have a dealership and you have a manufacturing facility. And that's been our approach with, uh, that was our original approach with marijuana as well. But to encourage and incentivize these large parcel investments, uh, we did say, well, if you're going to do a large investment, then you will get the benefit of what's ordinarily otherwise prohibited, and that's having a one-stop shop. Okay, thank you. And then the other question is, of course, um, We've said that the state has certain requirements for the licenses, right? Um, I want to know how uh, including uh, proof of a certain level of assets available so um, in order to get a license, correct? So I want to know how the state's requirements would affect if we made changes in this uh, from 5,000 down to 2, 5, and 8. I mean, would those be compatible, com comparable? You know, I mean, would you have to, it's like, uh, are you gonna have to prove you've got half a million dollars in order to open up a hot dog stand? That, that analogy, I think, is relatively accurate, actually, because for Class C, you need a half a million dollars in unencumbered assets, one quarter of which have to be proven liquid, and the other have to be unencumbered, so you can't have a mortgage on real property to show that, that net worth to get one Class C license from the state. So to be frank, lowering the square footage requirement on our end doesn't re realistically lower the economic barrier that the state has already put in place. Okay, so I want to address Councilman Davis's um, comment about, you know. Mays. No, that's not. Or Davis. That only deals with Davis. Davis. Oh, okay. About, you know, the kind of economic justice and being able to provide opportunities for the small business person, right, instead of setting it at a barrier that only the large businessmen. So if we lower these, I don't see how this is actually going to assist 
the small business person because the state's requirement that first of all you have to have a certain financial backing or assets. So I, I don't really see, and maybe somebody can explain it to me, how reducing these minimum square foot requirements will actually help the small businessman. Mr. President. Councilman Mace. Through you to Ms. Fields, the legislation in place is the legislation in place. If the state is requiring that type of demonstration of asset, liquid and or unencumbered assets, that's what they require. And somebody's going to have to demonstrate that. And if they can't demonstrate that, they won't get the state license and then they'll never make it to us. So the state law is the state law. But if they demonstrate that, then they can do a 2,000, they can do a 10,000, they could do a 8,000, or they could do a 50,000 square foot. Those things are totally separate as to what they have to demonstrate to the state. And so the small business person is knocked out of the state. But I don't want to hit him a double dose. This is just to do with the square footage as it relates to us and what we think is necessary for these particular operations. Amen. Councilman, okay. Councilwoman. I appreciate that explanation, but uh, it still doesn't answer my question uh, about why, if, if we're trying to consider the small business person, okay, by, um, making more facility sites available to them because there are more facilities that meet a lower minimum square footage, okay, like, um, you know, a, a 2,000 square foot building, right, that that could be considered. I just don't see economically how small businessmen um, or someone who actually has that money is going to, um, if they have to have a certain level of assets, okay, in, in order to get this license, it doesn't make sense to me that they would want to open up a 2,000 square foot facility because the requirement for the assets are so great, that businessman is going to look for a larger facility. Point of information. What's your point, Councilman? <laughs> All the requirements for the different class of license is not the same. Hello. That's really not a point of information, but um, do you do you understand that? No. That'll make it a point of information. Um, to me, this once again is interfering with the site that we want diversity in our businesses and diversity in our industries in this city. We don't want to take up every dang building in the city that from 2,000 square feet on, okay, to be, make it possible for them to do marijuana facilities. We need to have these, which were recommended by both planning and our legal department, okay, as a more reasonable gauge. It makes more sense to me to have a growing facility, the requirement be 5,000 square feet because um, the requirement by the state to have a certain level of asset for that, that makes more sense to me. I don't see what we would accomplish by lowering the minimum square feet requirement. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Well, it makes sense to me, and my position is this. You've got 5,000 square foot feet in Class B. You even got more than 5,000 square feet in Class C. The only one that's lower than 5,000 um, square foot is Class A. So um, 5,000, you're getting it in two spots, and then in one spot, you're getting two. The point is this. Mr. Erickson, can you go over the requirements to the state 
for each class of license and the cost? Yes, I can. So first, let me preface with all these numbers have the, what I discussed before as far as 25 percent liquid assets and then all of it unencumbered. So this applies to all of it, so I don't say it five times. Um, so growing, there are three license subclasses. There's Class A, which requires $150,000 in assets. Class B requires $300,000 in assets. And then the Class C, the 1500 requires a half a million dollars in assets. Processors, the repeat the last one. Half a million for Class C, 500,000. Processing centers also require $300,000 in assets for a license. Secure and then secure transporters and safety compliance each require 200,000. And then last, your prov uh, provisioning centers also require $300,000 in assets. And that's the state requirement. And so, Mr. President, some people you know, might call some of those small business owners. You know, it ain't, it ain't multi-billion dollar and million dollar corporations. Some people do classify those thresholds as small business owners, $150,000 um, versus a half a billion, 500000 So I'm clear that some of these people are still considered small business owners. And so I'm saying that for Ms. Fields because you can't change the state requirement for small business owners in this case. And so now if the state is putting this that is the burden April 12, on a City small of Flint business owner, special it's the City same Council way meeting. when we um, put bids out for contracts. There are certain bonds that's required for small business owners to get work with the city. Some people say those bonds price people out, but they're there. So this is the same type of thing. Until the state reps and the senators and others change those type of state requirements, my job is to try to help in any way I can. Now, if we're going to do a merit-based system, which I think we're going to have the votes to do a merit-based system, then all of this stuff will be checked and double-checked. And if you want a person with a Class A license to have more than 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 feet square footage, you'll be able to do that, Ms. Fields, when we look at the qualifications for merit base, you might give points for more square footage. So I hope that you really understand um, the state gives credit for assets. So if you um, own the building, you can show it on a balance sheet as well as if you own your grow equipment. Also, you have two to ten people on applications to get the asset numbers met. So you might have a situation where a building can be used if it's unencumbered. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. For 75 percent of the assets. For the asset. And so whatever building a person got, if it's more than 2,000 feet, they can use it. But if they had a building at 3,000 feet, they still can use it. If they have a building at 10,000 square feet, they still can use it. But if that 2,000 square foot building helps them, then God bless them. They can always have more. These are the minimum requirements and they can have more. So I'm satisfied with that proposed amendment for 2,000, 5,000, 8,000, and then totally 9,000. And I don't have to say or more, because those are just the minimum. They can have more. And Councilman, just to help, because Councilman Griggs asked a question a few minutes ago now. I don't, I don't need to speak for you. You do it well for yourself. But, but just putting it in layman terms, so what you are proposing actually makes the playing field a bit more level for those who may not have the wherewithal that the big folks, would that be safe to say? In, in my mind, and they still could adequately grow. Okay. Councilwoman. <laughs> I disagree. I don't see how it levels the playing field at all. No. Because I, the state is setting. I'm not, I, I got you. Okay. I got you. All right. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. Okay. We can't control the state. All right. 
Uh, Any other discussion? Yes. Councilman Greaves. If this chambers right here is 2,000 square feet, I don't think it is. It's probably closer to 1,500. Uh, and you plant these plants two foot apart, spacing. I'm assuming, I don't know if anybody here knows what the spacing is. This thing will hold a lot of plants. Uh, probably 10,000 right here in this room. If you did, if if you did two foot by two foot space, uh, I don't even know if anybody's got where they came up with these square footages, but they're there, and and, and maybe it's something that can be fine tuned later. Mr. President, Council? through you to the gentleman who raised his hand, it might be more. And if it helps Mr. Griggs, this gentleman, when you ask the question, is it anybody in the room who know the spacing on these plants? I would ask that if he can shed any light on that, if it helps you that he'd be allowed to do that. Mr. Ne Mr. Olson. Yes, sir. Sorry. Keith Olson. Please. We've been cultivating cannabis since the beginning of time. There's millions of ways to cultivate cannabis. Everybody does it differently. In Michigan, the 72 plants, the caregiver system, all of that makes the caregivers grow larger plants. Around here, I'll usually grow four plants under 1,000 watt light, four foot by four foot. And that's a larger plant. In California, where the drug laws are a little bit more friendly, I can grow any amount of plants I want. I can grow 100 plants on a four foot by eight foot table. Mm -hmm. A clone, a rooted clone, I mean, you can have 40 of them a square foot. Now, a full grown outdoor mature plant is not really the, the way that we would grow indoors. Most of the plants in California coming out of the industrial markets are grown in two gallon pots. You know, maybe two, three, four ounces a piece off of them at, you know, maybe two foot by two foot. So, Mr. President, through you to Mr. Olson, in your opinion, for whatever it's worth, if you had a 500 plant license and you had 2,000 square feet, would you think that would be adequate? I know guys that have 500 plants in their basement of plant. And it's not 2,000 square foot. So 2,000 square foot would right. be adequate. Absolutely. And if you needed more, you could have, you could come with three, four thousand. Just that's what I wanted to hear. You Generally, believe? when we use indoor lighting, a high pressure light will cover approximately a four foot by four foot area. That's a thousand watt light. You get maybe a pound and a quarter, pound and a half off of it. You've answered my question. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. And thank you all for being open to all this. I appreciate it. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? No. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. The vote is five yes, two no. Okay. What is the council's? Pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Ms. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. I would like to make another amendment to the ordinance as it relates to 500 feet um, away from a church or park. I would amend that from 1,000 to 500 in the ordinance. That would be the motion I would make. Is there a second? Is there support for that motion? I'll support. Could, it's been moved and properly supported. Could he restate the motion in terms of the location, the 500 feet from where? Yeah, Mr. Erickson can designate where it's at, but in the ordinance, um, right now you have a thousand feet away from a church, school, or park. By law, we must keep it in place at a thousand from a school, so I'm making an amendment to 500 feet as it relates to the church and park. It's been moved and seconded by Mr. Griggs. 
Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Fields. I'm going to say with all of these amendments that are coming up, I have a point of view, okay? And, and this is what my point of view is going to be. Um, yes, I support medical marijuana. But in the city of Flint, there is no necessity for uber, ultra maximizing opportunities for medical marijuana facilities in this city. I think what has been recommended by both our zoning staff and our legal staff is adequate. So I, I get in, I never thought of myself as a conservative, but on this issue, <laughs> I'm a conservative, okay? Um, I don't think the city of Flint needs to be known as, you know, the Weed City USA, Tree City USA, yes, but not Weed City USA. So I'm not going to support any amendment that is going to try to um, wipe out every opportunity for some reasonable distance from people who don't want to be next to marijuana facilities, don't want to be close to growing, you know, they. They preserve their right to have uh, no interaction with these facilities. So whatever these amendments that are coming up, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be voting on anything that Sorry. maximizes marijuana facilities in the city. That's your privilege. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, on, on this uh, change, I have been against it from the very beginning on changing that from 1,000 feet to 500 feet. I, I personally do not like the idea of having many places located next to parks due to many reasons uh, and uh, I'm not going to be supporting this and I too have been called the conservative one on council because of my views on this. I do support medical marijuana and in essence I might even support recreational marijuana um, but uh, with this ordinance changing that policy is not one thing I agree with. Okay. Councilman Davis. Thank you Mr. President. I will be supporting this because I really feel it should go down <clears throat> to at least 300 feet. Once again, I'm back at the, the point of, of my thoughts of being medical marijuana, not a drug house. If a doctor office could be there, a drug store could be there, a facility could be there. Now, if a neighbor didn't want it in their neighborhood, it should not be in that neighborhood. You should petition before you just go in a neighborhood like the Seventh Ward did last week. If you don't want it in your neighborhood, it do not belong in there. But these facilities are medical facilities. And I'm done. Okay. Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Mays. And when it get to the 300 foot residential buffer, I look at that as where we can add some in where residents can do just like they do liquor stores and others. Or, and you know, they might can come forward with the object. I've talked to Ms. Williams about that. But as far as the 500 feet I'm going to be supporting it as well. Um, when I hear Ms. Fields say that she won't support certain amendments, I'm going to see which amendments she do support. I think somebody mentioned something about the medical exemption. And so it's way more to these amendments than to say I'm not going to support them. And so Ms. Fields, it's been a lot of work. And even though zoning and planning and legal has did their job, now it's our turn to do our job. We have to gather information and then the buck stops here and we have to do. If you're going to support an amendment, I think I heard you say, on the merit base, then if somebody come 2,000 feet away and you want to give them points, give them points. We're making the minimum standard of 500 feet, and if you want to give points and merit for somebody that's 4,000 feet away, put it in the merit base when we get there. So that's how you do that. If you want to structure points for people that's 4,000 feet away from a church or school or whatever, and they're sitting over there isolated by um, Kersley Lake or something, and it ain't nowhere around, then put that in the merit base. But what we're dealing with is zoning now. So I'm trying to caution you, when we make amendments, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because you probably, I can't speak for what you'll do, but if I see you support the merit-based amendment, 
and you don't understand that you can give points for things that exceeds the minimum, then I think you're missing the point on the merit. And then I'll see if you vote for any amendments. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Councilwoman Fields. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, first of all, I don't Wait, care. Hold on just a second. You've, you've had your, so I'll come back okay. to you. Council, Councilman Griggs, go ahead. Okay, in a normal city, I believe it's 10 blocks in a mile. So that means each block is probably 500, 520 feet, 28 feet long. So that means stay a block away from the church, which could be difficult because in Flint, I've noticed you can have three churches in one block. Uh, I think a block is good enough to change it from two blocks to one block, to me, is good enough. Thanks. Thank you. Councilwoman Fields. Okay. I just want to say I haven't heard anything yet um, what that evaluation chart will look like or who will create the criteria for the merit-based chart and how it will be weighted. So that really hasn't been answered. I don't know that uh, council does or doesn't have a part in that process. Uh, so first of all, I have a question. Is that stipulated anywhere? Well, let me just say this. I think that's what that's the, that was the discussion that Councilman Mays was having earlier. Is that he didn't want the council out of the loop? That he wanted us included in the loop. And, and I'm 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 supposing that he meant in creating that merit base uh, uh, document. Okay, Mr. But Erickson. Now, the, but now you may want to do a point of information and let him chime in. No, that's what I heard. Okay. Okay. okay, Mr. Erickson, did you want to comment on that? Yes, so the, the draft that you have before you now as to the merit-based, uh, a rubric which would determine these factors and their weight would be presented to the council for approval before it was used. Okay, well, um, but I want to say about that merit-based, um, that final document may or may not turn out to be something that um, allows for control of this particular issue. Uh, but I do know if the ordinance is strong, okay, then the merit-based has to be um, based on the ordinance, okay? So I would rather have a strong ordinance and not leave it to chance that the merit-based uh, rubric, okay, will take care of that problem. And, and I quite frankly, um, uh, Mr. Mays, I don't really care what your opinion is on how I vote on these issues, so thank Mr. you. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. I, I'm, I'm hurt that you don't care what my opinion is, but I'm going to still try to communicate to you and all council people. Earlier we discussed the merit base, and the merit base is part of the ordinance. So if you want to make the ordinance strong, make the merit-based criteria and point scoring aspects strong. So when you try to separate the merit base from the um, ordinance, and we're going to put that in the ordinance, and that's going to determine, hopefully with our input, continued input, I'm not just ready to turn it over, then I would ask you to care what I say, I'm hurt if you don't, I care what you and everybody else say, but my position is the merit base will be part of the ordinance, and so I just wanted you to know that's still part of the ordinance. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. And then, uh, go ahead. You know, I'm going to support the 500 feet. Now, when I look at, we have liquor stores. <laughs> on every corner. Some liquor stores are across the street from schools, which means that they are right across the street from parks. Okay? So when I look at a medical marijuana facility, and I'm thinking medical marijuana is not the same as recreational marijuana. I mean, come on. We got to think about the people and, and the people, you know, what they need and particularly, particularly those people who, who need the medical marijuana. I mean, 500 feet, what's the difference? 1,000 feet, 500 feet? I mean, you got, you got 
there's 300 feet. I think the state allows 300 feet for um, parks or, or schools or whatever to be from um, stores that sell liquor. Come on, what, I mean, you know, what's the difference? Councilwoman Fields. Ms. Ms. Winfrey Carter, I understand your point, but we're, we're coming uh, at it from a slightly different perspective. For me, just because our zoning laws and ordinances re uh, regarding liquor stores are bad, doesn't mean that we should follow that example in adopting more bad ordinances regarding um, marijuana facilities. Um, I think we should revisit our zoning um, requirements under a liquor license, because I agree, there are far too many in this city. Um, but that also is a complex issue, because I hear the state kind of overrides us. But um, just because one is bad isn't justification to adopt another one that's not good. But, um, President, can I say Councilwoman. something, please? Um, Councilwoman um, Fields, we're talking about medical marijuana. We're not talking about recreational marijuana. So there's a big difference there. Medical marijuana to help people, to help people who have different elements that need to be on medical marijuana. I mean, I would much rather see our people on a, a, a natural herb as opposed to opiates. We're talking about medical marijuana. Point of information. What's your point, Councilman? Okay, I would like to inquire of uh, Attorney Erickson. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to determine this because maybe those records are closed, but how many people in the city of Flint have medical marijuana cards? Oh my Therefore, what would the need be for the number of marijuana facilities in the city of Flint? Because what I think is going on is that we're going to have people coming from the thump since only 25% the estimate point of communities are going to What's your, what's your point, in. Councilman? Do she realize we're going to limit the number to 20? And when she talking about limiting the other number, the number of them has nothing to do with the feet, per se. Okay. I'm sorry. So I went on talking uh, after I had asked a question. So, okay. Mr. Erickson. Yes, this is actually a uh, question that uh, Councilwoman Galloway had asked previously, and uh, I, it was amongst a number of issues in last week's memo, uh, but tucked in there was, at least as of fiscal year 2016-2017, per Laura, not necessarily in the city, but in Genesee County, there are 14,802 medical marijuana card holders, and then there's uh, Oakland County, of course, has uh, significantly more. I think they have like 20,000, and then there's 4,000 in Saginaw and 2,000 in the other two bordering counties. Forgive me if I'm mixing up the remaining three, but it's four and two ballpark. But in Genesee County, um, it was 14,802. That information is a little old. It's the most recent I could get on relatively short notice. And of course, the open question is, are there going to be more card holders? People, are more people going to sign up under the MMFLA? We will, it's kind of a wait and see. And Mr. President. Councilman. You know, and I'm not trying to really convince Ms. Fields because I just want to talk to the public. She was concerned about the 500 feet creating more. The cap of 20 handles that. We got a cap of 20. The 500 feet ain't got nothing to do with how many. We could put that cap at 10. This is the amendment time. We could put the cap at 13. It's 13 or 12 been grandfather clause in. So I don't want to see us as legislators mix apples and oranges and confuse the public. That 500 feet distance has, in my mind, nothing to do with the cap on provisional centers. You could, you've even discussed Ms. Fields putting the cap on grows since we've been sitting here. So I don't want to see us mix apples and oranges and confuse the public. And I'll wait to see what you do as you talked earlier about a cap on growth. Because I'm not going to allow alcohol 
to be compared to medicine, medical marijuana. That's a bad analogy. Kids can go in a liquor store. Kids can go in a um, corner store, drug store. If you want to put an, in the ordinance that nobody under 18 can enter this facility, this is the time to make these amendments. But I'm not going to allow stuff just to be threw out there as it relates to the numbers and kids and all of that confusion. This is one separate aspect of an ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And, and before we vote, just a couple of things. Uh, and I need you to help us with this, uh, Attorney Erickson. Now, when we are talking about reducing, let me get my glasses, reducing this uh, 1,000 to 5,000 from a church and a park, I think so that we won't, that, that there won't get, there won't be any bad information getting saturated in the community. Let's take, a, for instance, the concern that the neighborhood residents in the seventh ward had, legitimate concern. I don't want a dispensary. I don't want you to change my neighborhood into a place where there is a dispensary. That is a community. So how would this, or, this uh, change affect that? I, I can't see how it would because a thousand feet is a thousand feet. And, and, and if it's if there is a dispensary in a neighborhood that that's a thousand feet, it's there. And I don't think, I think the sentiment that I got from the Seventh Ward residents is that I do not want a dispensary in my neighborhood. I don't care how many feet it, 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 it is from me. So how would reducing this 500 to 500 would affect a neighborhood like? Point of information. Yes, sir. President Winfrey, you do understand that a D5 and a D6 is a different commercial zone than a D2, D3 neighborhood. Yes, sir. And that's exactly my point, is I want to make sure that that's there so that bad information or false information won't get saturated. Yes, Mr. Council President, that's exactly right. Uh, and the current ordinance restricts the provisioning centers to D5 and D6, as well as E, F, and G. But another, I think, very important provision meant to balance those interests that's currently in here is the 300-foot residential ban. Uh, and, of course, um, an applicant who is within those 300 feet could apply for a variance in mm -hmm. the instance that it would be appropriate. But we thought it in order to prevent, because um, in years, a few years ago, they did try to put a, under the old ordinance, a dispensary in that family video. And the response that this council has seen was, was pretty similar to the response then. And in order to pre prevent repeat issues, that's why we proposed the 300-foot residential ban. Um, and then if, if the neighborhood, um, for whatever reason, if, say you have the Flint River dividing the proposed site and the 300 feet away residential, then you have a, uh, a variance for those exceptions, but the default is keeping him out of the neighborhoods to prevent reactions like that. Yeah. And, and then my concern, Councilman, and, and my other colleagues as well, is I just didn't want folks saying, okay, now, the, you know, the council voted to reduce those, those, those feet. Now they can put a, a, a dispensary in our community. Because I think as it relates to, uh, the seventh ward and the residents over in the college cultural center i think that what is that zone d2 d2 or d3 i think i think but i just i just wanted to get that that information out there so any other discussion madam clerk roll call mr davis yes mr guerra no miss fields no miss winfrey carter yes Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is uh, five yes, two no. Okay. What is this uh, council's pleasure on 180153? Mr. President. Councilman Mays? I would yield to Mr. Guerra, Ms. Fields, or somebody. If they don't do the medical exemption, then I'll ask back for the floor. I just don't want to, you know, I, if, if don't nobody want to make the motion, I will. But I, you. Well, I got a different one. So go on medical first. 
Okay, you can, whatever. I'm yeah. just, I mean, I got a couple more, but I don't want to just, you know, I'm, I'm sharing. Because I'm caring. You want me to go first? Sure. All right. Oh. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Because uh, Davina is thinking that we were making all the amendments on the point one. So maybe I'm moving a little bit too fast here. Is that, is that my colleague's position on this? Um, I'm thinking whatever is best for the record keeper, I'm thinking once we vote the amendments, then um, however they feel we need to do them, I don't know if the whole ordinance would be a point one or however it's done technically, but um, if we need be, we can do all things necessary to make it work. Okay. Could, Mr. Mr. President. President. Please. Uh, I, I think, you know, we'll vote on it, I think the way you're presenting it okay. in terms of subject matter, okay? Okay. And in that regard, I think we'll have to defer to the legal department then to go in and into the proper ordinance to okay. make the amendments. All right. Uh, yes. Would you agree yes, that's fine. I'm, I'm tracking these amendments. So I don't anticipate a problem. And if you need, after we finish the amendments of all things necessary, motion um, can do that at the end of the amendment, proposed amendment. Or voted on the minutes. Okay. So for good record keeping, so where are you saying that we are now then? Okay. Ah, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. He'll be doing that the Let, Okay. Will be Let me ask one last question. So if we do it as a point one or however we do it, will we still be able to at the end move for adoption and first reading or I mean first reading tonight or we will have to hesitate. It's all said and done, the idea would be to have a, a five one point two and possibly a five two point one and a five three point one. Okay. For and then ideally we would want you to move those to a regular meeting for first reading. Not the first reading tonight. So you don't see no way to do first okay, reading. Okay, the, the only way we can do that now is, as I indicated with what Reed and I discussed, is when we enter this, it will be by subject matter. Okay. We'll give it to him, and then he will go into the proper ordinance and make the amendment so that with the three ordinances that we have, each one of them will become a different point number. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because you're, you're all kind of all over the place, which is okay. So, so once we right. finish, <laughs> through you, Ms. President, to Ms. Brown, once we no, finish. No, not tonight. Let's, not, no once we reading. finish, then we'll see, because it don't sound like they want to do. We can't do first reading first tonight. First read no, okay. With can't. the amendments. Okay. I don't see why right. not. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman. Um, I just want to make sure that we go through the ordinance ordinances, the amendments that are listed before we start introducing new ordinances that haven't been proposed yet. Okay. So we're still here. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President. Okay, but is it in here? Councilman Are we on 180153 or not? We're still at 180151.1. 152 .1. 5-3. Oh, go ahead, gosh. I'm going to have to leave pretty soon. Go ahead. So we really doing all three. So can I make a motion that we, ex uh, that we accept what Mr. Mays is suggesting? You we already did. did. You seconded. On a you vote second. of five I'll to second two. it. Yes, yes, you did. Uh -huh. I'll second it. Okay. So Thank we're you. on to the next issue. Yes. Oh. Councilman Gary. All right. So uh, I would like to make an amendment to wherever necessary uh, for Reed to get us into. Um, underneath the ordinance proposed in front of you, um, if you go to the last the last page, there's section R, 
I would like to add a new section called S. Uh, this proposed amendment is a tax abatement prohibition exemption. So condition of licensure, pro prohibition of local tax subsidies and abatements. No medical marijuana facility license shall be granted to an applicant who is also receiving any form of local tax subsidy or abatement for the location of the proposed medical marijuana facility without an exemption by way of resolution by the city council and mayor. Point okay. of information, he has totally confused me. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I, I thought we what, were what still is, on 180151.1, and he's referenced us to the last page of the ordinance. Right, yeah. well, under R, page 49, after page uh, 49, it's, it's R. This would be a new section to be added to the actual ordinance itself. So it's part of the, it's not in the ordinance yet, but it's a new section. Uh, legal can help answer that question how that's possible. He, yeah. Point of information, have we just agreed to go through what's on the agenda first and then? Add new ones? No, that was a no. suggestion. We didn't agree to it, but, but I, I don't think it's a bad idea uh, so that we all can get on one track. But then I think uh, the city clerk made a, a point that all of them relate. Point of order. What's the point? That count, count was that a motion? Yes, that's a motion. What he did, yeah. Oh, okay. So what's the order? Well, the order is that it needs support. So is, there any is there any support for that motion? No. Would you? Re it's been requested that you repeat the yeah, motion. I'll pass it around for everybody to take. Oh come on, Mr. President, is this showboating or what is this? <laughs> Mr. Griggs, we're trying to get out of here as quick as we can, and anything yeah. <laughs> that is uh, contrary to that is will slow us down. Yes. Would you would you would you help us out here? Go ahead. So, uh, very briefly, council members, this would be a new subsection, subsection S, that clarifies. Um, and for some background, the the general purpose of opting in is not only. Order. order. Yes, councilman. If he want to withdraw his motion, then we hear from him. But I think it's That's an right. unfair Absolutely. discussion if the motion died for a lack of a second. But if we gonna do that in order, I ain't gonna never let it be discussion and selling or That's denying right. in the middle of a motion. You're, you're absolutely right, right councilman. It ain't, you know, you, your I point, can't go that councilman. Way. Your point is made. This motion either it needs to be seconded or second. it dies for a lack of second. Second. It's been moved to properly second. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Now we're into the discussion phase. Attorney Eckerson. Thank you, Mr. Council President, and, and you are correct, Councilman Mays. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed I didn't catch that myself. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, so basically the rationale for here is to uh, allow flexibility, but nonetheless support the revenue generating approach that opting in is partially intended for. Of course, a lot of discussion has been allowed, has been around patient access, and this isn't meant to take away from that. But the idea being, especially with provisioning centers uh, where you're talking about a limited number of licenses, uh, we, uh, the intention of this um, subsection is to say as a condition of having a marijuana license, you cannot, without an exemption being made for your special circumstances by way of resolution, be getting a tax-free status by way of a subsidy or a um, or an abatement for your property because the purpose of subsidies and abatements are to encourage economic development and uh, we think that the the marijuana opting in ordinance also completes that goal so we don't need to burn it at both ends to incentivize investment however there may be the rare circumstance because sometimes you have these tax abatements and they're approved at the state level and may be very difficult, if impossible, to get away from, in which case then that applicant would present uh, his or her case to this body and for a resolution making an exemption to that otherwise ban on double dipping, so to speak. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, most tax abatements or requests for tax abatements and stuff come before this council even obsolete districts and stuff come before this council and we have the opportunity at that point to turn them up or down. You might have a situation where somebody under this ordinance is already in a district and so that could create a problem. If you got somebody already in a district and then they get state approval 
and then I've got to deny them because they've got some tax abatement, or if they come in here with a $50 million investment. I mean, they say they want to cater to the big shots, so I don't know if I can support this at this time. I have not researched it. I have not had enough discussion on it. And, um, you know, I don't want to single these businesses out just because they are a particular business. We have used this as a tool, and I'm not going to treat these businesses any different from another business. I don't want to go carte blanche no on them. And um, I'm looking at a facility down here um, that very well might already have a um, tax-exempt status on South Saginaw, and I'm concerned about that. The doctor done spoke, and we done did a medical exemption. I can't vote for this at this time. Mr. President, I agree, with Mr. I agree with Mr. Mays. I can't vote on this. I don't know if this is a Zoning Board of Appeals uh, item. I don't know if I need to be talking to Mr. Newsom on this. I'm not, I'm not supporting this at all. Thank you. Mr. President. Any other discussion? Councilwoman, Councilwoman Fields. Yes. Um, I might well support this, but I'll tell you, it just points out that even though the plan is to finish amendments today and hopefully have the first reading at the next regular council meeting, uh, there are some additional questions and information about this proposed ordinance, and I think there will be the one that I'm going to propose, which is uh, an amendment which allows for a cap on both grow and processing facilities. So uh, I don't really know how to handle this, but I think we will might not be ready for uh, a first reading uh, on Monday. So that one I wanted to comment. And the other thing, indulge me for just one quick minute. I just found this very interesting getting that number of how many card carrying, uh, you know, medical marijuana users there are in the city because uh, basically we've got about 30,000 households that have water accounts in the city that um, we're having trouble collecting. Our collection county. rate Port is county. very low. That was the so I, I just thought it was interesting point that of basically half What's that number apparently had to take the marijuana. Do, she, do, over that. do she realize okay. that was not the city? That was a county It was a county, statistic. right. Mm -hmm. Was that county or city? Yes, yeah. it was county. Oh, no, I thought it was city. No, it was county. County. Okay. Any other discussion on this motion? Then let, let me, since, since we have some <clears throat> ambiguity regarding this, uh, instead of making a substitute motion, which I can't make, um, just uh, uh, would the maker of the motion, Councilman Guerra, be willing to table it? For table it? until there's more information or to the councilman, uh, council persons can get more information and then move forward. I don't think that they're against it, but it's just that there is a lack of information and there may be some more details that's needed. I'll right. make that motion. I'll set the table until Monday. Is that is that is that the mo is that is that in the form of a motion? It sounds like you're you're asking me. Well she made a motion, so Monday. I made a motion to table this. Item until There's Monday. a motion on the floor to table it until Monday. Is there support for that motion? I'll second it. It's been to the next meeting. There is no meeting Monday, so now you're talking about. So there is committee. Yeah. Uh, Point of information. Councilman Mays. Do are we planning a special meeting for Monday? Not that I know. No, it, it, that ain't the we one. We haven't announced it yet. Okay, okay. Let, let me amend that motion then. Okay. Okay. Um, I make a motion to table this until the next committee meeting. And, and I believe legislative is the correct committee. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll second. It's been moved and properly second. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Is there any discussion on the, on the, on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Uh, Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The vote is 
seven yes, zero no to table to legislative committee. Okay. Moving right along. Yeah, Mr. Pre Mr. President. Councilman Mays. I would move that we put into the ordinance the um, medical exemption as we had a exemption type language passed out. Um, before I make the motion, let me pull back and start over. Um, through you to Mr. Reed Erickson, this um, proposed amendment medical research facility definition medical research has got number 27 medical research facility. Where did it derive from? Did you have any input in this? I, I did draft this, Councilman, with some uh, at the request of Councilwoman Worthing. Uh, she had some proposed language and asked me to take a crack at it. Okay, and so um, I would move um, that we do a proposed amendment such as this one, and actually this amendment. Um, it's only one change that I'm looking at, um, Attorney Reed. Under the section 27, it says the applicant is a Michigan lic licensed physician. I want that to be a valid Michigan licensed physician versus a suspended um, Michigan licensed physician. So I want that clarification in there that it must be a valid Michigan licensed physician or, you know, partnership entity versus suspended. I don't want people with suspended license um, taking a shot at this. And then I'll continue to look at any further amendments, but I would move um, this proposed amendment with that change for um, approval. That's your motion, Councilman? Yes. Is there support for the motion? Support. Could he restate the motion? The clerk is asking to restate that motion, Councilman Mays. Um, we had a proposed amendment for medical doctors and medical research, so I moved this proposed amendment for approval with one change that it says a valid um, physician, Michigan physician's license versus a suspended license. That, Madam Clerk. Could you tell me what paragraph that's located? Yeah, that would be in the first paragraph where it says um, the applicant is a Michigan licensed physician prior to um, the word um, Michigan, okay. it would be something to clarify valid versus okay. suspended. I see. And there is some support for that motion. Is there any other discussion? Yeah. Mr. President, we've <laughs> lost a member. Ms. Worthing ain't here. I don't want her stuff to fail. So I would move to um, table this uh, proposed amendment at this time. Okay. It's been moved. I would move to table it to later on in the meeting, okay. or I'll see when I do it again. Mr. Griggs is gone. That okay. affects some. Is that support? Is there support for that motion? Yes, support. So it's been moved and table supported. To legislative. To, uh, no, I just said to later on in this, later meeting. On in this um, meeting. Before the meeting is adjourned, I'll figure out what to do with. I understand that. That's still his motion. And then is is uh, Santino is. Yeah, because we didn't lost yeah. some members, yeah. and we were moving pretty good. All right. So. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The vote is five yes, zero no to table. Mr. President. Councilman Mays? I'm concerned with the ability to continue with the work of amendments and um, got a flavor of what passes and what fails. Um, I really wanted to get this work done today, but we've got members 
that's absent. <laughs> and that concerns me on this legislative process. So, um, you know, I've seen meetings that's been recessed. I know we got language in the um, council rules on how we can recess and adjourn um, through you to Mr. Guerra. Mr. Guerra, have you looked at the um, medical research facility proposed amendment? I've looked at it today. Today was my first time seeing the amendment. Uh, you read a vote or you need more time? Uh, I think if we're going to table the one that uh, we already tabled, that was my amendment. We'd like to table that one too to that time. And that's what we did. And so we've now lost a certain group of folk. And so what I'm going to do, um, Mr. President, I'm, I'm, I'm about to make a motion to adjourn, but I don't want to do it and slight my colleagues. I'm a stickler for doing that and not doing that when others do it with me. I really want to get this important work done. I think we've made some key amendments. I know there was discussions about um, the merit base. So let's take a stab at the merit base. The um, merit base approach versus the first come, first serve. This ordinance has the first come, first serve. We've already approved and it, we did the amendment on the merit base. So the merit base aspect, um, I think we wanted to further amend that to allow council to have input. Mm -hmm. And so you talked about, what is it, Rubik? Oh, how did you say that? Rubric. Say that again. Uh, Rubric. I don't know. A, a rubric or a scorecard. Yeah, a scorecard, but what, did, what is y'all calling? Rubric. R-U-B-R-I-C, rubric. R-U-B-R-I-C. I see. Rubric. Rubric. So rubric is the scorecard. Yeah. Why didn't y'all just say scorecard? Why the scorecard. you didn't say rubric? But anyway, the rubric. So when I say rubric. Scorecard, councilman. And it was language in there about the, once the staff do that, um, and it go to certain folks. I want language in there that help, that allows us, I think you got the clerk in there um, as one of the staff persons or you don't? You don't? Mm -mm. Okay, so the clerk ain't in there and the council ain't in there as it relates to this scoring system. You got the police, mm -hmm. what you got, planning. Let's look at that. Direct me to that page. The amendment is on pages 8 to 10, Councilman. Let me turn there and I can tell you specifically. Page 8. Through 10. Through 10. Okay. And I'm looking specifically for those that's involved in the rubric. Yes, so then. C. C. On page 9, bottom left. The scoring left. panel consists of desert needs of the head of legal planning and zoning, police, fire, build inspection, safety, shell score. I would want to see the council president or the council's designee in that mix. If you can have a designee from legal, planning, and zoning, now those are staff people. I wouldn't care if you had a planning commissioner designee as well. But I'm thinking I might want to see a desert need. Give me your argument why we shouldn't have no desert needs from these type of bodies. And if you, you sell me, I'll say, okay. Councilman, so far I, I've sold you very little, so, but I'll do my best. <laughs> um, specifically, our intention with staff is to avoid Open Meeting Act questions, which then could lead to slowing down this process, which is already going to be a large process when it comes to review. Can I interrupt you yes, there? Yes, you can. If you got one designee from the council and or planning commission, you ain't in jeopardy of open meeting violations, but proceed. Well, we're trying to do the evaluation without creating a board or a body similar to this body or the planning commission under this ordinance. And a broad reading of the Open Meetings Act 
could read a body created by ordinance now being subject to the Open Meetings Act requirements. So quite specifically, we're trying to balance the intention of this body to do a merit-based review, do it thoroughly, and by way of presentation of the scoring criteria to this body, make sure that the council is still intimately involved in the factors that are important to the review, but avoiding the Open Meeting Act issues and also avoiding uh, slowing the process down and as uh, was raised earlier, the potential for political argument. So Despite let me ask this question. Why ain't the clerk's office on there? Or have you got licensing or anybody from the clerk's office on there? No, but that I'm not in opposition to that. You ain't in opposition to that? That's correct. Okay, I'm going to be in favor of somebody from the clerk's and or licensing or the clerk's desert knee. So that's one. But now keep in mind, I'm kind of going with your legal interpretation as it relates to not creating a board or body as it relates to the Open Meetings Act because certain multi-member bodies fall, would you say, up under the Open Meetings Act. Would that be a fair statement? Yes, it would, Councilman. So you saying that these folks communicating wouldn't be up under that in your opinion. Correct. We're quite explicitly not creating such a body. So let's go a step further. Then let's look at the rubric, the final product. Would that be a right way to say it? Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got the final rubric. It's coming to who? To this council for approval in an open meeting. It's coming to the council for approval in an open meeting. And that's where the council would have input. That's correct. And we can scrutinize that final rubric to the cows come home. We specifically encourage that. Now let me ask this question. The criteria for the scoring, the way this ordinance is wrote right now, we would have input on the criteria as it relates to the rubric. Yes. And how um, soon would that come to us if we pass and adopt this ordinance? What would you anticipate? That would be the first step. That Where is the language that says that criteria would come to us? Do you know where to find that at? Oh, yes. Um, factors for scoring. Uh, uh, and shall provide the final rubric for approval by a majority of the city council. And that's uh, on the column on on the right of page nine, maybe a third of the way up. Yeah, it say, and shall provide the final rubric for approval by the majority of the council. That's the final rubric. The scoring criteria shall include factors such as. So let me, the scoring criteria, that's the one that I want input on before you start scoring and getting me a final rubric. Yes, and in fact, what this is just meant to be is a, here are things that are guaranteed to be presented to the council, and, but that's meant to be a floor, not a ceiling. So it must have these factors, and we can add additional factors as well. And if we've gotten anything wrong in these factors, obviously uh, this body can amend that. So, so what I'm trying to do, do we need to make an amendment now in this ordinance, or before we finalize this ordinance, we need to make sure that we then talked about the scoring criteria. Because if I settle with those desert knees and heads illegal and all of these people, then I think I would want to um, look closely at that scoring criteria or I might lose my opportunity. Uh, forgive me, Councilman, what's, what's the, the question? Uh, I don't want to lose my opportunity on input on the scoring criteria. Oh, absolutely. And I don't see where if I don't amend and change this ordinance specifically given the council input, then I think that the only criteria would be local hiring for staff, sub or, and or subcontractors, the size of the proposed facility, the total capital investment, 
whether the applicant has a history of prior building code violations and whether the applicant has already received pre-approval for the state from the state. I don't think that um, you got criteria in there like um, I might want to see um, whether or not not only local hiring, are they local applicants and for out of state. You know, I want to work on that criteria more without losing it yet. So I, I mean, can I word it? Yes, count, the, the intention of the final approval before the council for the, the scorecard was for that very conversation. That, that was why we included it to say for approval by the council. Okay, so that means you saying that if y'all give me a scorecard, a rubric, and y'all done spend all that staff time, and I say, but you didn't consider whether they from Flint or whether they from Detroit, you gonna allow me to put that in then and give them more points? I don't see that happening. Well, Councilman, that's the legislative process, and we're trying to adhere to it and, and respect the, the legislature's role in, in crafting the criteria okay, under so the ordinance. Okay, so let me do it this way. If this, if this ordinance says and shall provide the final rubric for approval by the majority of the city council, do we need to put language in there? Um, it ain't just approval. We can actually add to or change the final rubric before we approve it with what you're telling me. Would modification and approval? Okay. That's a good word. Whatever you come up with, that's my concern. That's a good word. That's better. However you want to come up with it. If you want to go with that, I'll make the amendment now. And um, so, Mr. President, I would move that on page nine, mm -hmm. subsection D, that mm -hmm. where it says and shall provide the final rubric for approval by the majority of city council, that that would read and shall provide the final rubric for modification and or approval by a majority of the city council. Okay, that's the motion. Is there a second for that motion? Support. Councilman, <laughs> Councilwoman Fields, it's, thank you for the support. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Um, Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. The vote is um, six yes, zero no. No, 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 uh, let's go, go, go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Fields. Well, since we're apparently not going the way we said we would go, I was going to make a motion. I would like to see two additional amendments, but I would like, not quite sure how to do this, because I would like to see them prepared by the city attorney and brought to the next committee meeting. Okay. Um, what would the best way be to do that? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. I would ask that it might be pretty good, Ms. Fields, if you discuss them and if we hear them and see that you got support, we'll kind of figure out how to do it. What, take them one at a time is what I would do. Mm -hmm. Now, before we do that, now you, Councilman Mays, you had mentioned the inclusion of at least one other department into this. oh yeah, yeah now how do you you just gonna leave it out there so let's can if she would allow us go back and stick the clerk in there and or her designee and then and then we we'll come back to come right back okay mr president councilman mays i would move an additional amendment on the scoring panel to include the clerk and or the clerk's designee okay. in subsection C, the scoring panel. Is there support for that motion? Is support. there a second for that motion? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Okay, this is the 
This is on the modification to include the clerk to in the score. Okay. That's still on uh, page nine. Right. Okay. Section C. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have it. Okay. All right, Miss Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Miss Miss uh, Mr. Mays. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Miss Fields. Yes. Miss Winfrey Carter. Yes. Vote is six yes, zero no. Okay, Councilwoman Fields. Yes, I would like to make a motion to have an amendment to this ordinance that places a cap on both the number of grow and processing centers. Um, that number to be recommended by city staff at our next committee. Being specific there, aren't you? Yes. Okay, is there, is there any support for that motion? That. Councilman Guerra, thank you. Uh, any Mr. discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. If I heard her motion right, her motion was that the staff should make a recommendation on the um, number of growth. But I heard that as an amendment. I wouldn't really do that as an amendment. I would ask them to make a recommendation, and then when they make the recommendation, then propose it as an amendment because the amendment would be in the ordinance. And so if you make a motion that they make a recommendation, an amendment that they make, you know, so I think we got the drift, so I'll be quiet. I would suggest, you know, we can do it in the form of a motion, but not as an amendment, you know. I'm willing to withdraw that motion and, and make restate. a different motion. Yeah, Okay, and that motion is, Councilwoman? I guess the motion is to have the city legal and zoning make a recommendation to council at the next meeting for uh, a cap on both growing centers and processing centers in the city of Flint to be licensed. Okay, is there support for that motion? Second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Garrett. Just for clarification, that's kind of like making a motion to have a discussion item from in a way at a committee meeting, so we're not necessarily agreeing to vote on any, just to talk about it? Just clarification? Well, no, because we never get to discussion items. <laughs> so, um, President. what is the easiest way then to make sure this gets on committee, <laughs> that we're dealing with this next committee? Councilman. Yeah, Mr. President, I think that motion is fine. We'll see what their recommendation is, and we'll decide then whether we accept it change it or amendment, but I'll be supporting that motion and I'll see what they come up with. I'll see if they come up with 10, 20, 30, 50, or 200. Okay. Once I see what they come up with, that'll give me a radar on whether I want to put a cap or not or what I think. So I'll support the motion and, um, you know, we'll take it from there because if we do that, then it's going to be some merit base that go along with that. I'm already knowing that I want merit base on security and transport as well as provision and centers. What am I missing? Security, transport, processing, provision and centers, and why not grow? So if we do put a cap on the grow, because right now we got a cap on security and transportation and provisioning centers. The only two left open that ain't gonna have a merit base is grow and processing. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna mess with this motion. I'm gonna support it, but um, Reed, you might want to bring back a recommendation on processing as well, because um, that would be the only left one open. If these get caps on it, I'm gonna put. Um, okay, I'm gonna be trying to put both all of them in the merit-based rubric system. Okay, I learned something today, so you know. That's going to be the next amendment. Everything with a cap going to be merit-based. What's your point, Council? 
Um, I just want to make sure on the agenda we don't get lost in discussion items. So well, I don't want to make it a special order, just this one item, but under the discussion under legislative, yeah, but then when we're the, talking about all the amendments, yeah. I want to make sure that this is included. Then this new, this new discussion item will go probably to the front of the list. Instead, of, that's, that's the way I've understood and, it to be. And Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. The, yes, the, the intent of this motion that I'll be supporting is not to order y'all to come back with none, but we request and we ask Absolutely. them because under the charter, that's all we can do is ask. We ask and we ask and, and if you do it, you do. If you don't, it ain't no penalty because we don't order y'all. We politely. Okay request and ask. And so right. I'll be supporting this asking motion. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call. This is on legal and zoning. Right, this is a cap on the, on the, the cap. Right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. The vote is six yes, zero no. Okay. Councilwoman? Winfrey. Um, okay, my second uh, one is I would like um, to make a motion to amend under the security section, I've already forgotten what page it is, that it is requirement that all growing processing and provisioning centers have staffed 24 hours a day a minimum of one security personnel at their own expense. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. It's been moved and properly second discussion. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Now, I might not vote on this one because if I got a business and I got insurance, I don't know if I can hire a security person there 24 hours a day. I don't know if Rite Aid do it. I don't know what businesses do it, but I know this business some um, might think folks will break in, and they might. Now, I might look at it in that rubric and give them some points if they say they're going to do that. But I don't know if I'll put it in the ordinance. I might look at it as something I might give them points for. And so I, I don't know if I'm going to vote for this one. Um, I understand security concerns. Now, if you want me to learn more about it, Ms. Fields, and I, I would go for a table with the other ones, but right now my thought is uh, I, I got to do a little research on that. Okay. Mr. President, I'm amenable to tabling this to the next committee for discussion. Okay. Second. She, is that in the form of a, of a motion there? I don't think I could make a substitute motion my own motion. Somebody okay. So well, you can move the table. You can move, you can move the table. It. Yeah. All right. Then I move to table this to the and next you, legislative committee. Thank you. And to the next legislative committee. Correct. And the then 14. it was supported by Councilman Guerra. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President, I wouldn't want it to go down. It's something that we can look at. It's something I've talked to some of the folks about they might have security it might can get them some more points as we deal with this scoring system um i wish that we talked i wish they could hire flint police just like some of these other places did versus security and we got another police on the street that might get them some points but whatever they do that security is a good concern, and I don't want to vote no until I talk about it some more. And it's some, it's an, it's, it's Ms. Fields' um, proposed amendment. So rather than me vote no, I will be voting to table it so I can research and talk some more. Okay. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is six yes, zero no.
Mr. President, in line with what Ms. Fields is saying, I'm not going to put it in the form of a motion, no language in the ordinance, but it's in the same line. You know, Flint got that camera stuff. And I don't know if it's in there, but that camera equipment, oh, okay. the chief and them say they can look at stuff. Is that in the ordinance? Yes. Yes, it is, Councilman. Okay, so they're going to have to have that camera equipment where the police department can be looking at their stuff, right? That's in the ordinance. Yes, Councilman. Okay, I Mr. thought Mace, I had... Mr. Mason, it's on page, page 15, 15 of the document. Okay. And then this one gentleman mentioned some about outside grow versus a facility. Is this all inside grow type stuff? Is we able to legislate this? I mean, I know it can be, <coughs> according to some state, it can be industrial or agricultural, but we don't have agricultural zoning, or do we? Um, so you telling me all this green space, we can rezone stuff agricultural, can't we? Have we got any agricultural zoning in Flint, or do I have to propose some agricultural zoning in the city of the great city of Flint? Talk to me. Yeah, Councilman, as, as you well know, um, the city does not have any agricultural zone land. Um, it is this body's uh, ultimately decision if. <laughs> They'd like to create a new zoning district. Um, so, you know how difficult uh, those conversations have been. So, last Kevin, I might look at some agricultural land if you bring me something. If y'all want to propose some agricultural land, I mean, I don't know if it'll if, if we can grow stuff at Buick City or at AC where they used to be. Um, <laughs> I don't know in my area. I mean, green space, agricultural, that's a fine line. So you bring me, if you choose, if you have time, I know we strap for um, help in certain departments. We, we, we even most strapped are, yeah. up here in the council. Look how strapped we is. Yeah. But the point is this. If you bring me some agricultural, I don't know if it'll be ready for this adoption. But I'm telling you, I'll take a serious look at it, not just for this, but overall. The stuff that y'all call in green space, you wouldn't call agricultural, would you? We would not, no. I mean, we don't call anything green space. We call it green neighborhood, green innovation, or open space, which are public parks. So what if I wanted to call it green space, open space, ag slash agriculture? I'm a legislator. I could do that. So it's, it's a good question. And, and when we first came to you with the uh, total revision that the city's uh, been working on since 2014 of the zoning code, we actually would permit it in the Commerce and Employment and Production Center and Green Innovation 2, which many of those sites are former industrial sites, but the intent is to get a green centric use, not a traditional industry. So within those three districts of the proposed code, um, but that's not what we're following by law. Well, I would say this through you, um, Kevin, to Mr. Keeler and everybody else. You ain't got to worry about me allowing agricultural zoning in the neighborhoods. It might be agricultural zoning. Um, in a in a different area. So as I explore this, don't get nervous that Councilman May is exploring Mr. Keeler, the seventh ward, and all the people. It would be a very agricultural space and a similar to what they I think my point would be made. So we'll see if we ever get any agricultural space in the um, city of Flint. Now, our zoning, one last thing, Kevin, if I may. Our zoning ordinance without agricultural zoning do allow us to grow tomatoes and greens and watermelons. In certain districts, correct, yes. In certain districts. Correct. Which ones? Uh, it depends on the use and how it's done. So we ain't going to go I out mean, there and be messing up nobody's gardens this summer, is it? If you take their land, you might be, but... Uh, well, I don't yeah, want I don't that know. to happen. Boy, we might have to really get into that and fix it and give an exemption. And so, all right, thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, 
uh, Mr. President. Yes, yes, sir. Um, I really wanted to try to move these amendments for first read, but I'm hearing from the clerk, I'm hearing from legal, I'm hearing from staff, and I want to check one last time. Is it any way I can word the amendments that's been passed? Because now if we do more, it's going to have to come back from first read. When is the next time this council can meet? We are almost done. When is the next time? I mean, through you to Mr. Um, Erickson, but I've seen Ms. Donahue, so I would yield to Ms. Donahue, but I'm still, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to get this over with. Have we got a committee meeting this Wednesday? No, next, with, next, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So we'd be ready for second reading and adoption the first meeting in May. Not adoption. Not adoption. Not adoption. Not a, well, after publication, and we can do some immediate effect stuff, maybe. Yes, but on, on this kind of ordinance, it has to go through a 15-day period. Okay. And, and we do have a deadline that Reed, I think, should speak to as it relates to the state. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, so like I touched on when, when we began this, this hearing, we're looking at June 15th, so we would like to have, at a minimum, two weeks, end of May, beginning of June, before that deadline, so that the currently operating temporary provisioning centers have the opportunity to at least plead their case to the state of Michigan. Now, uh, at this point, I don't know if the state will have ruled on those applications by the 15th. Um, but at, we're, we're going to do the best we can to get them timely before them. And um, having it this Wednesday and then for reading at the next coming Monday is in line with the schedule that we would be operating under if all the amendments were made tonight regardless. So we're not necessarily at least losing anything as long as the subsequent amendments on Wednesday are the final ones. So can somebody help me with the amendment that I tabled to later on in the meeting? What amendment was that? That was the medical so. research facility exemption. Okay, the medical research facility exemption. And mm -hmm. so if I count the number of people here, it would be too risky to get a no because it seemed like it's moving pretty good. Mr. Griggs left. Eva Worthing, who is introducing that, ain't here. So I don't want to vote on it right now because I don't know what Mr. Santino Guerrero will do. He said he want more time. So it's a little risky. I think I've done all that we could do here today in my legislative opinion, Mr. Erickson and to Corey and Kevin and all those who took their time. I really apologize because I'm like a workaholic. I'd go like a ever ready, what was that, energizer bunny type guy. And so I just don't want to jeopardize good legislation. And so what I'm going to do now is be quiet. And if I'm quiet and my colleagues ain't got nothing else, then, you know, I'm going to let you go with the agenda. Um, but as far as me stalling and filibusting and looking at any other amendments, I'll do that later on my own time. I think we did some good work today, but I just want to get it done. Let me get one last clarification on time frame. Am I hearing y'all say that if we send this to committee, we ain't going to make the amendments till we get back out on the floor, right? We ain't making amendments in committee. You would be working we on work the amendments. We would work on them, but they'd actually be made out on the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, you would move them we'd, to the floor. We would know, know where we're headed. 
So yeah. we could make them on the flow and do first reading the same day? No. Mm -mm. So that's why could, I'm thinking. Could we, could we get together with you and talk privately? Really okay, we can do that process. because yeah. if we need another special meeting prior to that, maybe we will. Could I mention this, Mr. President? Sure. Okay. Having worked on some of these ordinances before, when the marijuana law was, was voted upon by the people of the state of Michigan back some years ago, my staff and I, along with the law, the police department, and others, did research on all of this, and it took six to eight months to do the research before we could actually finally write the first ordinance. And basically where I'm going with my point is this. While what we're putting together here may not be perfect, it still gives us something to operate under with the understanding that later on, as we progress, we can go back in and make other amendments, okay? So this is not the final thing, so to speak, but it gets us to where we want to go. Yeah, and, 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 and I understand that, but I know it looked like we got that medical exemption. That's the one that I'm thinking we might can pass. Eva seemed to support it and we might can pass it. And so I wish that we could have got that done tonight. We might have almost everything ready except for one or two more. So I'm saying with this council, now you know I usually am present. But I might come up missing in action, and then we don't have a quorum. So I'm nervous, Ms. Brown, because I don't know what this council will do. But I'm going to go and have confidence, and I look forward to talking to you privately. And if we need a special meeting, I hope that this council will show up. We are close to getting this done. I thought we'd get it done today and be ready. I'm very kind of... I'm interested in finishing this up. I'll just leave it like that. Um, how many amendments did we get done, you think, Reed? I count three councilmen, but one of them was, had a number of, has number, the first one had a couple factors to it. I think it was three. I think it was yeah, three. And you got somebody can give them to me, so I won't. Before tomorrow, the next, we'll get them. I'll probably get a copy. Mrs. Brown got them. Uh, Mr. President, I'm, Councilman Nace. I'm quiet for right now. Okay. Well, I thought don't I need to be quiet. Mr. Guerra. I thought you could. What's the council's pleasure, Councilman Guerra? Oh, Mr. President, <laughs> point of information. What's your point? Is Mr. Gareth in the move to adjust? Yes. I think. I wonder if he would yield to me. Yes. Mr. President, before we move to adjourn, since when I said we would go through the rest of the agenda council discussion, what I wanted to bring up was the information about the motion that kind of upset me last week or either earlier this week. Mm -hmm. I was up in Senator Ananick's office yesterday, I think it was. We do have $6 million Six point in one. that reverse, because 6.1. And I want to make a referral because I want to find out who authorized or dealt with that other four or five million. I mean, I'm asking for an accounting on that. I want to know if anybody from the city requested that it be spent for pipe replacement. The media is reporting pipe replacement, and somebody in Senator Ananick's office seemed to think it might have been pipe replacement. There's no way I thought we was using any of that money for pipe replacement. I thought pipe replacement was coming out of another pot of money. Now, if that money has been used for pipe replacement, I had conversation that we could ask that that money maybe be put back into the reserve fund. So if it has went to pipe replacement for whatever reason, I'm going to ask that that money 
be looked at as put back in the reserve fund because I know AECOM is doing an application for money. We spent, I thought, contracted out with W.T. Stevenson, Goyette, and Lang them for a pipe replacement last summer. I thought that was a part of $40 million different from that reserve fund. So when I talk to Senator Adam McNam, and I'm thinking that we might be able to talk all of us publicly shortly, we talked about whether that money can be put back in that reserve fund. But I just want everybody to know that I went out on the line saying that money was there. And had we used our money and kept them pipes open, I believe, whether we used any of it, all of it, just like I said, it would be put back. And so I've been watching that even before Mr. Newsom them was here. And so my position is this. I'm disappointed in the leadership of the city right now as it relates to them pipes. Now, I'm getting calls of people got water coming in from Washington, churches getting involved, but still I think we got an opportunity to draw down from that reserve fund. And if we have to be the stopgap measure with our general fund, mm -hmm. we should do it. I'm not going to put dollars and cents over the possibility of kids, women, elderly, and children. Once we start shaking up that ground, everything I done learned over the water crisis, say they water be turned off and the ground move. And you can flush and do, but if that population received water, that would be fine. And then finally, I'll say this. People want Councilman Mays to say the water is fine. You ain't going to hear me say it because I'm not testing myself. And I done went through that. But what you will hear Councilman Mays say, and I hate to keep picking on you, Mr. Keeler, but I like you. We was both recording secretaries in the UAW. What I would say, Mr. Keeler, to the public is you will hear Councilman Mays say, price what it takes to build a bottled water plant here in Flint that can bottle up and purify water. I wouldn't care if it cost five million, ten million. We done did all that. We done spent all that type of money. And so if you gonna keep getting water, I wouldn't care if you owned it, Mr. Keeler, Mr. Green, R. L. Mitchell, but I'm for building entrepreneurship. And we got a now economic development team down there. We done built Auto World, Water this Street the Pavilion, 12th, the Hyatt Regency. Flint you mean to tell me Councilman. we can build a bottled water factory and it might be sitting right out there on Dort Highway. So I know we can do that. And so that's my job to provide that type of conversation. Now I dare somebody to beat me to the punch. But I don't want to do like we did with the grocery store. The minute we talk about it, some big shot come in here and build it. And then folks that look like me or you, Mr. Guerra, or Flint folks ain't got none of the pie. So I'm putting it out there. And then once you build it and it's producing good bottled water, which people trust, because they don't trust the water coming out of the faucet, then I'll go a step further about distributing it. Because it can be distributed in more than one way, and the wealth can be spread. But people laugh. They laugh for 10 years, 20 years, and he always told other counsel, he who laughs last, laughs best. Now, if you want to, Mr. Guerra, um, but my record is made and it will continue to be made and I'm going to continue to fight for the people of the city of Flint. Thank you. Am I recognized? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn. Is there a second? Mr. President, I second that motion. It's been moved and second. Any discussion on the motion?
Mr. President, if it was and I voted no, you couldn't adjourn. Ain't no discussion, man, on That's no right. motion All to right. adjourn. <laughs>